The Astro theme is the number one most popular WordPress theme in the world. The Astro theme is known for its speed, customization, and compatibility with other page builders. It also comes with more than 250 starter templates, so no matter what kind of website you're trying to build, you'll definitely find a template for your online business. What is up, party people? My name is Daryl Wilson. Today in this video, I'll be showing you all how to create a WordPress website using the Astro theme. The theme customizer with Astra is loaded with a variety of features. It comes with a header and footer builder, a variety of page layouts, and in this video, I'll show you how to use all the theme customization options with the Astra theme. The pro version of the Astra theme is loaded with even more customization options. But if you look at the pro version features, it's hard to tell exactly what you're getting if you upgrade. So I'll clear the confusion. I'll go through each of the pro features and give you a side-by-side -side comparison of the free version of Astra and also the pro version of Astra. Now I'll be the first person to say that the pro version of Astra really isn't for everyone. In most cases, the free version of Astra will do just fine. However, the pro features are always nice to have. So in this video, I will be covering all the pro features of the Astra theme. So let me explain what I'll be covering today in this video. I'll first show you how to get web hosting and a domain. A domain is the name of your website, like mycoolwebsite.com, and web hosting keeps your website online 24 hours a day. I'll then show you how to install WordPress. Then I'll show you how to install the Astro theme and build your website. We will be using a drag and drop builder called Elementor to build your WordPress websites. In the next section, we're going to go through all the theme customization options in the free version of the Astro theme. I'll go through each option and fully explain what they do. This also includes the blogging features and e-commerce features just in case you want to run a blog or an e-commerce website. In the next section, I'll walk you through all the features in the pro version of Astra. I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the free version and the pro to help you decide if the pro version is right for you. We also do have a 10% discount code for the Astra Pro theme, and I'll leave that in the description below of this video. Now, I realize many people watching this video for my channel probably already know how to build websites. If you guys do want to jump to like specific parts like the Astro Pro section, I do have timestamps in the description of this video, and you guys can use those to jump around to any part of this tutorial. You guys ready, party people? All right, cool. Let's go ahead now and create your WordPress website using the Astro theme. Now, there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase fast cloud web hosting. And this is Hostinger.com. Now, Hostinger.com is among the fastest and also the cheapest web hosting available. Right now, they're having their Black Friday sale, but I have a discount code that's even better than their Black Friday sale. So even after watching this, you guys still will receive the maximum discount code available. And you guys also do get a free domain. Now, once you guys are here, if you guys do want to adjust the language here on the top, you guys can change this to any language that you want. So you can change it to Spanish or German or Portuguese or Japanese or whatever you want, right? So you guys can go ahead and select your language. But once you guys are here at the top, you guys will see WordPress. Go ahead and click on WordPress. Now, once you guys click on it, you'll click on claim the deal, or you can just scroll down. And here we have three different plans. We have the premium, the business, and the cloud startup. Now, I personally recommend the business because this actually gives you increased performance and it also gives you access to NVMe storage, which is a lot faster than SSD storage. So once you guys are here under the business plan, we'll click on add to cart. So next we're brought to our checkout page. So we'll go ahead and scroll down. And here we have to select a period. So you can select 12 months, 24 months, or 48 months. I personally recommend the 12 months. This will give you enough time to decide if this is for you or not. You guys also do get the largest discount available. You guys get a free domain name and you guys also get a 30 day money back guarantee. So once you guys select your period, we'll then scroll down here. You guys will go ahead and create an account. So you'll put your email and your password, your Google account or Facebook or whatever it is you guys want to use. You guys can create an account right here. And below that, we'll select our payments. So you guys can pay with credit card, PayPal, and even cryptocurrency. How about that? Now, what I want you guys to do is right here under the coupon code, I have a larger discount code available than their current Black Friday sale. So right here under have a coupon code, if you guys enter the coupon code Daryl10, you guys will receive, I think it's like 70 something percent off here. We'll go ahead and type it in here, Daryl10, and I'll click on apply. So it went from $53 to $48, and that gives you a maximum of 71% off the hosting package. So the next thing you guys will do is go ahead and enter in your credit card information. And once you guys enter in all your information on this page, I will go ahead and meet you on the very next page. All right, so once you guys make your payment, it'll then bring you to this little wizard. So right here, I'll click on start now. 
So next they're asking us, who are we creating the website for? But I do wanna skip this wizard. So right here at the bottom, I'll click on skip. I don't want personalized experience. The next option is create or migrate a website. So right here under create a website, we'll click on the select button. Next they're asking us to select a platform, but I do wanna skip this because I don't want to propagate all this stuff. I want a fresh clean slate of WordPress. So at the bottom right here, you'll click on skip. I will start from scratch. Next, we have the free domain. So under claim a free domain name, we'll click on select. And then you'll type in your desired domain. So whatever domain that you want for your website, you'll go ahead and type it right here. So my domain is available, darylwilsontutorial.com. So right here, I'll click on continue. So next they're gonna ask you for some details. So right here, you'll put the country, you'll put if this is personal or company. And next I'll click on next step. So next we're gonna enter in our contact details. This is where you're going to enter the details to claim ownership for your domain. This is important if you guys ever want to sell your domain or if you ever want to claim ownership, you guys will need to enter in your contact details so that your information can be verified. So go ahead and fill out your information here. All right, so once you guys are done, you'll then click on finish registration. So next they selected a server for us that gives us the best performance available. So next I'll click on finish setup. Okay, awesome. So now our website is ready. Now we can either view the website or go to the control panel. But right here, let's go to the control panel first. So right here, click on manage site. So here is the hosting or dashboard and this is where you can get all the information about your websites. So here you guys can see that our plan is active. We have our domain. You guys can also set up free emails with Hostinger. Pretty cool, right? And then also you can see your performance score. On the left side, you have different tabs, right? So you have hosting, you have performance, security, and this is where you can get more information about your hosting package. So here you have your name servers, you have the hosting details, and then you also have these server details here available. Resources usage, this lets you know how much you're using on your website, right? So right here, I'll click on performance and then go to page speed. So you guys can also analyze your websites by going over here and clicking on analyze. Once you guys do that, it's going to analyze your website's performance. This takes probably like, I don't know, five seconds. And here you guys can see that our website has a 97% page speed score on the page speed insights. Of course, you know, there's nothing on the website yet, so it's gonna be very fast. And the more you add to it, the slower it may get, but we'll walk you guys through all that in the video. So next we have the analytics, which shows you the top countries visiting your website and also some errors. If you guys do have any errors, they'll all be displayed right here. It also shows your total requests as well. Next, we'll click on the security and click on malware scanner. If you guys ever suspect there's something on your website, it's like a virus or something, you guys can always check the malware scanner and they'll notify you if your website has any viruses on your websites. And next we have the SSL. Now, Hostinger actually automatically installs the SSL on all websites they propagate. An SSL is this little cool uh, padlock up here that gives you the connection secure. There was an update a few years ago that Google required all websites to have it, and now Hostinger gives it to all the websites by default. If you guys do need any help with your website, they do also offer a little chat box here where you guys can go ahead and um, you know ask them a question. And if you guys do have problems with your website, you guys can go ahead and go through the form right here. And there are support agents that can help you with any problems you guys have on your websites. So that is pretty much it for the support and the interface. Now, before we build our website, we do need to verify our domain. So the domain that we actually purchased, we need to verify that in our email inbox. If you guys don't, after two weeks, the website will disappear. So make sure that you guys um, verify it. You guys can do this by going to your email right here and you'll see that you have an email from Hostinger. This right here says important, verify your contact info. I'll go ahead and click on this email and you'll need to click on this link right here. This will go ahead and validate and verify that you own the domain. So I'll click on the link and then you'll see that the email address has been successfully verified. Pretty cool. You guys will also need to do the same thing for your hosting your account. So right here, verify your email address. Then I'll click on verify email. So after you guys verify your account, it'll ask you for two-way authentication, but I'm gonna skip that for now. So I'll click on cancel. So now let's go to WordPress. Right here under hosting, we'll click on manage. So next, let's install WordPress on our domain. WordPress pretty much allows us to build our website with drag and drop builders and make it really easy to build our website. We're gonna scroll down right here and click on websites. And then we're gonna click on auto installer. Here you're gonna see that we have WordPress available. So I'll click on WordPress. 
And here we're just gonna give our website a name. You guys can always change this later. Don't worry about it, it's not that big of a deal. But I'll put my new cool websites. Here we have the email and then we have the username and then also a password. Make sure that you guys write these credentials down because you guys will need this in order to log in and log out of your WordPress websites. Once you guys enter in your credentials, you'll then click on next. Here they're just telling you they're gonna install WordPress. So right here, let's click on install. All right, cool. So now Hostinger has installed WordPress on our domain. Right here under admin panel, you guys can click on this to log into your WordPress websites. So let's click on admin panel. Okay, so now we are logged into WordPress. This is their setup wizard, but I'm gonna skip it. I never like any of the setup wizards to be honest. Uh, here, we'll click on dashboard. So this is your WordPress dashboard, and this is where all the magic happens. Now, if you guys wanna see what your website looks like right now, here at the top, I'll click on visit sites. And this is our new websites. Pretty cool, you know, they entered in some just basic demo content for us, you know, I guess just to help us get started, but uh, we're gonna delete all of this and we're not gonna use any of it, but it is still nice they gave us something to work with. So let's go back over here to dashboard. So before going any further, now let's adjust the general settings. So over here under users, let's click on profile. Now you guys can actually change the color scheme of the back end of your website if you want blue or ocean or midnight. I like midnight the most because it's really easy on the eye to see what you're doing, right? Now we're gonna scroll down right here and this is where you guys can also update your email. This is where your credentials will be sent to in case you guys do forget your password for WordPress. They'll be sent to this email right here. So make sure that you guys do have access to it. We'll go ahead and scroll down. Here you guys can make a new WordPress password. So if you guys do wanna change your password, you guys can do that right here. And then once we're done with that, we'll click on update profile. Next, we're gonna go over here to settings and click on general. Here you guys can go ahead and also update the email if you guys wanna do that. And if you guys do speak any other various languages, right here under site language, you guys can change this to any language you want. I mean, they have tons of languages you guys can use right here. So you guys can select Spanish or German or French or any language that you guys want. Once you guys do select that, we'll scroll to the bottom and click on save changes. The next thing we're gonna do is update our permalinks. So right here, I'll click on permalinks. So here we have the permalink structure and you always wanna set this to post name. The reason why you do this is because you want your website to say, you know, mycoolwebsite.com slash about us, right? Or slash contact us, not all these random numbers and letters and it doesn't make any sense. Post name is actually optimal for SEO. So go ahead and select post name, scroll to the bottom and then click on save changes. All right, now let's go ahead and click on our dashboard. Now let me show you guys how to log in and log out of your WordPress websites. So right here, I'm gonna log out. So I'll click on log out and I'll go ahead and just visit our websites. And as you guys can see, it brings us to our websites. But as you guys notice, there's no way for me to log into the websites. If you guys do wanna log into your websites, all you gotta do is go to your website, type in dash WP dash admin and press enter. This will bring you to the login screen where you guys can log in with your WordPress credentials. So you'll enter in your WordPress credentials here I'll click on remember me so I don't have to keep logging in. Then I'll click on login. All right, cool. So that's how you guys can log in and log out of WordPress from any location. Okay, so now that we have our domain and hosting, let's go to the next section. So in this next part of the video, we're going to install the Astra theme, then we'll import a starter template, and then I'll show you how to build the website using the drag and drop page builder. It's really simple. After like 10 minutes, you guys will definitely get the hang of it. So let's get started. Okay, now before going any further, I do wanna to talk to you guys about a very common misconception people have with WordPress. Now, many of you guys watching this video might have gone to wordpress.com for your website, right? Well, wordpress.com and wordpress.org are two different platforms, right? Now, if you guys do see a screen that looks something like this right here, this is wordpress.com and this is the wrong platform because this platform is sort of like WordPress, but there's tons of limitations, right? If you wanna use plugins, you gotta pay for it. If you wanna use themes, you gotta pay for it. It's not really open source. So most users tend to use wordpress.org, 
which is this platform, oops, sorry, this platform right here. Now, the more confusing part is this is only available through hosting companies like SiteGround, Bluehost, Hostinger, Name Hero, and other various hosting platforms, right? Now, I know that's very confusing, right? But I have actually made a whole nother video that talks about the differences and confusion between WordPress.org and WordPress.com. So if you go to WordPress.com and try to use the Astro theme, um, it's not gonna be there, right? So uh, they do have like a, a different version of it, but it's really not the same thing. So here you'll see that WordPress.com has four different plans. And these plans here are sort of like WordPress.org, but these two are completely different platforms. So it, it is confusing, but uh, I just want to throw that out there. So if you guys do run into uh, something like this right here, where you guys see a different screen, it's because you guys are using the wrong hosting. And I recommend using the hosting that we talked about in the beginning of this video. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. All right, so the next step is now let's install the Astro theme. So let's go over here to appearance and let's click on themes. And right here, let's click on add new. Now, before we install the Astro theme, I quickly want to talk to you guys about what exactly is a WordPress theme and what does it do for your website? First, let's talk about what is a WordPress theme. Every website you make with WordPress requires a specific WordPress theme. Without getting too techy, a WordPress theme is a general style and layout of your current website. Each WordPress theme has different options in the theme customizer. The options can range from a header and a footer builder, different blog post layouts, controlling the width of your website like a blocks or a full width, or specific e-commerce features like product layouts or different shop page layouts. A WordPress theme generally controls the layout and style of your current WordPress website. A WordPress theme does not build the website itself, but it's more of an outside shell for the page builders and a starting point to build your WordPress website. You guys got that? So a WordPress theme essentially controls like the outside shell and also other various parts of the website, like the archive pages, uh, parts of your e-commerce websites and other various parts. Now, when you look at these demos, a lot of the uh, content here is all done with the actual page builder and the theme controls like the header, the footer and other various parts of the websites. So that is the confusion between the theme and the page builder. You do need both, right? So it is a requirement. You do have to have both. Now I want you guys to install the Astra theme. Here is Astra, and if you guys can't find it, just, just type it in guys, here we go, A-S-T-R-A. And here is the Astra theme. The Astra theme is the number one most popular theme for WordPress, mainly because it has tons of templates and it's just really easy to use, right? So right here, I'll click on install, and then we'll click on activate. All right, congratulations, we installed the Astro theme. Now, they're first gonna prompt you to install these starter templates, but we don't wanna do that just yet. Let's go ahead and close this. And here on the left side, you're gonna see Astra, right? So let's first go to the dashboard. Let's, let's walk you guys through this. So this is the Astra dashboard, and this is where like, a, you know, it's like a welcome wizard, right? Here, they're saying, hey, getting started, this guy will help you out. Here are some options to go to the theme customizer, which we'll talk about a little bit later. On the right side, you'll see they have supports, uh, join the community, so you can join the little Facebook group and troll them, you know? And then over here, we have the rate us where you guys can give them some ratings for their WordPress theme. And then over here, these are pro modules, and we're gonna go through all these a little bit later in detail to see if this is for you or not. I'll be quite honest, guys, the pro version is not for everyone, but it is for some websites. Now, let's first go ahead and click on settings right here. So the general options, guys, sorry, they're only available in the pro. My bad, all right, so we're gonna skip that for now. And the general, we can load Google Fonts locally, which can speed up your websites, you know, just depending on how much content you have, but these are like millimilliseconds, so it will speed it up a little bit. And over here, I'm gonna click on the free versus pro. So here is the Astra free versus the pro section, and here they basically tell you what you get in the pro version versus the free version. Now, I'll be very honest, not everyone needs the pro version, it is suitable for some websites, others, you don't really need it whatsoever. And it is actually hard to see what you actually get in the pro version, right? Like limited features, it's like, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, so uh, I will be doing a side-by-side -side comparison explaining the detail of what you get in the pro versus the free, right? And then over here, we have starter templates. All right, so let's go ahead now and install these starter templates. So right here, I'll click on install and activate. And what this is gonna do is this is actually gonna give you access to their uh, free pre-made templates that you guys can import on your websites. All right, now it's saying select a page builder. 
But there is one secret I want to show you guys before we do this. There is another option for another page builder. And I don't know why Astro did this, but I'm gonna show you guys really quick. Here, I'll click on back. You guys don't have to follow me here, but I just wanna show you this option in Astra and they hit it for some reason. I don't know why. So over here under settings, I'll click on general. We're gonna scroll down to the bottom and here you're gonna see starter templates. This says enable Brizzy page builder templates in starter templates. Brizzy is also an amazing free drag and drop builder. Um, it comes with tons of templates. It's really simple to use. Uh, so right here, I'll click on save changes. And now let's go back over there to the Astra, right? Astra dashboard, starter templates, and voila, now we have the option for Brizzy. Now Brizzy is also another drag and drop page builder. It's really simple to use. In fact, I recommended it to my friend's girlfriend and she made her whole website with Brizzy in a matter of seconds. It's really, really simple. Now, before we go on any further, I do want to explain what exactly a page builder is and what does it do for your website? All right, let's talk about page builders. Like we talked about earlier, WordPress themes are the shell of your website, allowing you to control the structure and page layout of your WordPress website. A page builder designs the website and creates the actual website itself. With a page builder, you can add images, text, colors, rows, and columns. For every WordPress website, you do need to have some sort of page builder in order to design the website. There are several page builders to choose from, and many of these page builders are completely free. There is Gutenberg, Gutenberg is the default builder with WordPress. Elementor, which is the current leading free page builder for WordPress. Brizzy, which is great for beginners. And Divi, which is one of the most popular premium page builders for WordPress. To be honest, there is really no best page builder. I do believe whatever works best for you and your WordPress website is the page builder that you should choose. You need to spend your own time to go through each builder and see which one works best for you, as they do have all different styles and benefits. For this video, we will be using Elementor. This is the most popular free page builder for WordPress with tons of integrations, templates, and resources to use. So to summarize, that is what a page builder is. It's essentially needed to build your WordPress website and gives it the overall look and style of your website. You guys got that? So a page builder is essentially going to create all the content within the website. Now for this specific tutorial, I wanna use the Elementor page builder. I wanna use this one right here. In my personal opinion, I think Elementor is number one. Brizzy is number two, Beaver Builder number three, and the block editor, Gutenberg, your last place, guys. Sorry. You know, it's it's a very uh, clunky, clunky builder. I just I just don't like it, you know? So let's go ahead and click on Elementor. And here are the available templates that you guys can use for Elementor. Now, on the right side, the top right, you'll see that you can change the actual, um, you know, change the builder, and they'll show you the templates available for that specific builder, right? And then over here, we can filter between popular and latest. Latest is actually important because they do make a lot of neat templates, but they put them like way at the bottom and it's hard to actually uh, see them. I think these are actually, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't like these ones. These look kind of weird, you know, interesting. It's like a new, I guess a new style or something, I guess, I don't know. So here are some of their latest templates, right? And these are all available with the Elementor uh, free version. Now, the ones that say premium, these are actually in the pro version, so you cannot use these unless you upgrade to the pro, right? But what I wanna do also is show you guys the categories. So here we have local business, right? Personal care, we have professionals, personal sites, and so on and so forth. And you can explore with these categories right here, right? So if your client is like, you know, running a, uh, a preschool, you can click on preschool and then use like a template right here for preschool and stuff like that. Now, really quick, I want you guys to click on business. Now, one thing I do wanna point out guys is I know when you look at these templates, it looks like they're templates for specific businesses, but all you need to do is just replace the color and the images and you can turn this one into like a cupcake website or a veterinarian website or a video game website just by simply changing the colors and the images. I'll show you guys an example of that in just a bit, but we're gonna scroll down and this is the one I wanna install right here called Digital Agency. So go ahead and click on Digital Agency. All right, so this is a template that we're gonna use and trust me, even if you guys are not in the Digital Agency business, I can show you guys how to convert this into any type of website. Now, if you guys do have a logo, you guys can upload a logo right here. Um, if you guys don't have a logo, don't worry. I'll talk about where you guys can get a logo for really, really cheap. All right, so I'm gonna skip and continue. 
And here we can adjust the colors, right? So what we can do here is pick between these different color schemes. Now, if we scroll down on the website, you're gonna see that it's going to apply throughout the entire website, which is really, really cool. You know, I do like that. So like I talked about earlier, you can see that this pink color is already getting us set up for like a, I don't know, some sort of feminine website, you know, some girly Cosmo website, you know, or something like that, right? And uh, here I'll go ahead and select blue, right? So now you'll see that my website is all blue. And let's go ahead now and scroll down and change the fonts. So here we have different fonts, right? And I always recommend, I have a, an elementary tutorial that's like four hours long. I always recommend to have two fonts. You want a primary font and then you want a secondary font, right? On my website, we actually use Poppins and Roboto. Here they're using Poppins and I believe it's Open Sans, right? So I'm gonna select Poppins, or no, Poppins and Lado. I think that's a, yeah, I, I'm not really sure what they did here. Yeah, Poppins and Lado, I guess, okay. So I'm gonna select Poppins and Lado. You guys can select which font you want. And don't worry, we can change this all later. Here, I'll click on continue. And one last step, we can put in our name, our work email. You guys can also subscribe to their newsletter if you guys wanna do that. But I'm going to skip that. Make sure these are all checked. And then once you guys fill in the information, you guys can then click on submit and build my website. All right, now Astra is going to turn your ugly website into a beautiful one. So just give this like 20 seconds. And how about that? We now have a beautiful website that looks fantastic. You'll see it imported all of the pictures, the colors, everything looks fantastic. We have a nice footer here at the bottom and we'll scroll up and we have a beautiful landing page. Now, really quick, if some of you got to a page that looks like this right here, don't worry about it. Sometimes that happens when you guys are using Astra and I'll show you guys how to fix that. Now, before we go any further, we need to assign our homepage as our homepage. So up here, let's click on customize. So these are the Astra theme options. And this is basically where you guys can build your header, you guys can design your footer, adjust the blog page, and other various uh, customization sections for your website. But what I wanna do here is under homepage settings, you wanna make sure that you have a static page right here, and then you select your homepage to your homepage. This is essentially telling WordPress that I want the homepage to be the very first page people are brought to. For example, if I change this to my About Us page, right? Here, I'll click on home. And let's just say, you know, I set the about us page and I close this. What's gonna happen is if someone goes to my actual website right here and they visit it, they're gonna first go to my about us page, right? So all we're really doing here is we're just assigning the first page as our home page, right? So for home page settings, I want the home page to be the home page, right? And then click on publish. And I'll close that. And then if someone goes to my websites, you'll see they're brought to my homepage, right? So you always wanna make sure that you guys always assign your homepage as your homepage. So next, real quickly, I'm gonna introduce you guys to the theme customizer one more time because we just, you know, quickly went over it. Now, the theme customizer is available for every single WordPress theme. And what this does is it grants you more options for your website. For example, here we have the header builder and this controls the actual menu of your website. You'll see if you hover over it, we have this section where we can customize the header. And what we can do here is we can drag the button above the menu and move it around, right? So you'll see how we can customize the actual menu here. And if I click on plus, we can, you know, put in some social icons, right? And I can drag them next to the button, right? You'll see, there we go. And we got some social icons near the button. And if I click on this, you'll see that we have more options here. Uh, furthermore, we can go ahead and customize the color. So these are like black by default, but we can change them to something like white or something, right? You'll see how it changes to, to white. And then of course we can move it around and so on and so forth. So this is what the theme actually does. It actually sets the options for the website. So many other themes don't have this and this is exclusive to Astra. Other themes do have header builders, but they're all different, right? So that is basically what a WordPress theme does in a nutshell. It grants more options for your website and more customization features like the header builder, and then also it grants you like different blog post layouts. Now we're gonna come back to the theme customizer a little bit later. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to create pages and also how to add them to the menu. So you might wanna add your own page right here, like, you know, my staff or something else, right? I'll show you guys how to do that. So let's go over here to dashboard. And over here we have pages. Let's click on all pages. 
So these are all the pages for your website. So we have the about us, the contact, the home, and then we have these other pages here, but we don't need these pages. So I'm gonna click on both of these and then put those to the trash. So essentially, you know, I don't want those pages, right? Those are, you know, they're just random pages I don't need, right? I'm gonna go ahead and close these notices. They get quite annoying, right? Now let's add a new page. So up here, I'll click on add new. And this will be like my staff or staff, right? Staff, publish and publish. Okay, so we made this page, right? Now let's click on the WordPress icon. And really quick, I just wanna show you guys the website. So you'll see, even though we made that page, it's not on the menu. And that's because we need to assign it to the menu. So let's go over here to dashboard. And under appearance, you're now gonna see menus. Now right here, it says select a menu to edit. Now, when you guys create these starter templates with Astra, they actually create menus for you. So here we have the top nav menu, right? So if I click on select, this is the actual menu that they created for us. Now, if you guys wanna create your own menu, screw it. I'm gonna delete this menu, right? And we're gonna make our own primary menu. So to create a new menu from scratch, right here, I'll click on create a new menu. And this is our primary menu, right? Primary menu. I'll click on primary menu, and then I'll click on create a menu, okay? So what pages do we wanna add to the primary menu? Well, right here, I'll click on view all. We have home, about, contact, services, staff, and I'll click on add to menu. And we can rearrange this, right? So if I wanna put the staff in the middle, the contact at the end, and here is a very interesting one called custom links. Now, custom links is essentially just creating a random link to any website, right? So this can be a Facebook group, right? So let's say, for example, this is like your Facebook group, right? I'll put like www.facebook.com slash, you know, Daryl's group, Daryl Wilson group. And then this will be like Facebook community, right? So you can also add random links to your menu, right? and users can click on that and then go directly to your Facebook group or something like that. So let's click on Save Menu. All right, and let's take a look at our websites. There we go. We have the home, the about, right? We have the staff, but the staff is empty, so don't worry about that. We're gonna design that a little bit later. And here we have services, we have our contact, and then we have the Facebook group, but obviously it's just like, a, you know, it's gonna be a 404 just because I just put in like a random link, right? So uh, yeah, so that's what we can do. You guys can add uh, links to any website that you guys choose. So let's go back over here to home. All right, so here is our new menu. We have the home page, we have the about us, we have the staff, but staff is gonna be empty guys because we haven't done anything yet, but we'll design this page a little bit later. Here we have services, and we have contacts. And if we scroll down, you'll see that we have a contact form, we have a map, really, really cool. We have some information on the right side and then a phone number, which you guys can add your own. And then we have our Facebook community. And if someone were to click on this, it would actually go to your Facebook community or whatever link that you put in the URL, right? So let's go back to home. Okay, so next, let me give you guys a 10 minute overview about how to use the Elementor Page Builder. Now, this is gonna be just a small crash course on how to use the builder. Here at the top, you're gonna see Edit with Elementor. Go ahead and click on Edit with Elementor. And this is gonna turn on the Page Builder. All right, now Elementor is always creating new innovative features. One of those is the AI image generator and they have a lot more. Now, again, this video is just gonna be a crash course on Elementor. It's a very robust builder, but I'm gonna go ahead now and close this little notice. All right, and this is the interface for the Elementor page builder. Now, really quick, I wanna close this navigator. This is essentially just showing you how to jump to like different sections of your website. But for now, I'm going to turn it off, but I can always turn it back on over here in the navigator section. Now on the left side, you're gonna see that we have elements and you can drag and drop these elements anywhere you want on the page. Now there are free elements and there are pro elements. So these are the general elements where you guys can drag and drop onto the page. The pro is for the Elementor Pro version. And then also the basic are like the basic most used uh, elements like text, images, text editor, buttons. I mean, these are pretty much like all you're gonna use, right? These other ones are kind of like fancy schmancy a little bit. 
But for example, what I'm going to do here is take the star rating and drag and drop it. When you see that little line right there, you can drop the elements and then the element will propagate right there. Now for every single element with Elementor, there are three different tabs. There is the contents. This controls the contents of the elements. There is the style. This controls the actual color and topography. And then there's the advanced. This controls the actual position. And it also does other things like motion effects. For example, if I click on motion effects, we can add like little animations, you know, to your elements. I mean, you can add these for every single element, you know, but guys, be careful with these, okay? They can make your site look really weird, <laughs> really fast, right? I do use a lot of these on my templates that I sell on my websites, um, but we are pros, guys. So we actually use slide and down quite often, but there are good ways to use it and there are bad ways to use it. All right. So now that I showed you guys that, um, what we can do is, let's say, for example, you guys want to change something, right? So fastest and most lightweight WordPress theme will put, welcome to my real estate business, right? I mean, maybe you're like a real estate agent, I don't know, right? And then I wanna take this and I wanna drag this above it, right? So you can drag and drop any of these elements. When you see that little pencil icon, you can drag and drop that. You can drag and drop it back, right? And then over here, you'll put something like uh, sell your house, sell your house, right? And below that, you'll see that we have more description right here. And obviously you can put in any description that you want. Now, let's say for example, you know, here we have the text right here. We can move the position to the right, the center or to the left, right? And then for the style, like I mentioned previously, this is where you can change the color of the font. Oop, I'm gonna close that. You can change the color. And then also what we can do is you can change the topography. So I'll click on the pencil icon and this is all for the topography, right? So you can change the font to pretty much any font you want, you know? So, uh, you know, tons of different fonts, right? I like Lado, where's Lado at? Where, where are the Lado fans at? Here we go. We got Lado, okay. And then we can change the size, you know? Now you can see the text will only showcase in the square. It will not go outside of it. Not unless you want it to, but we can delete this and, you know, make it bigger. But, and then over here, I'll do something like bold, right? I think that's already bold. Yeah. And then over here, we can make it all uppercase, right? Or lowercase or whatever, right? Whatever you guys want to do. And then over here, I can do something like italicize. Pretty cool, right? Now, let's say you guys want to delete something, right? Maybe you guys don't want this text right here. If you right click on any elements, you guys can duplicate this elements. You can copy and paste the elements and then also you can delete it, right? So for example, I'll delete, I'll duplicate this, right? And then I'm saying, you know what? That's too much text. I'm going to right click and then I'll delete that, right? And you can do the same thing for columns. So you can right click, you can duplicate columns and you can also delete it. Now, for example, uh, maybe over here, we have this second box right here. I'm gonna take this video and then drag and drop it. And then over here, we can put in like a YouTube video. So you can use like a real estate video and then you can you know paste it there. And then there are some other control options. So for every single element, you're gonna see that you have more options for that specific element. So for example, you can autoplay it, which is pretty cool. You can also mute it. So if someone comes to your website, it's gonna start playing, but it's not gonna make the sound, you know? So there are a lot of really cool control options for the video player right here. Now, if I right click on this, you guys are gonna see I can copy this, right? Now, what's really cool is with the Elementor page builder, you guys can actually copy the style. So you see how we made this text, right? We changed the font and the, you know, we made it italicized. I can right click on this copy and then I can paste the style to another element. Now it must be a similar element. So for example, I'll right click here, copy. And then what I'm gonna do over here is under sell your house, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna paste the style. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm taking all the work I've done for this and then I've pasted it onto another element. And you guys can do this for buttons, you can do this for anything that you want, right? Pretty cool. So let's say for example, I'll duplicate this We'll change the color, right? We'll change the color over here really quick. Let's see, background color to something like, uh, we'll change it to like a red, right? So I can always copy this 
and then I can always paste the style onto another element. So that's a really quick way and convenient way on how to carry out your work throughout the website. Now, you know, this looks ugly guys, right? So I wanna go back. So in order to go back, here at the bottom, you're gonna see history. And what's really cool is you guys can actually go back all the way to when you're working on your website. So if you guys did make a mistake or something went wrong, no problem. You guys can always just go ahead and, you know, go back in the back to the future, you know, and uh, uh, change anything that you want. Now, let's say, for instance, I don't really want this column. You know, I don't want it. You know, and now we have this this section right here. So I'm going to say, you know what, let's make this a, a landing page. You know, here we got the. You know, we have a landing page and let's make it a little bit bigger, right? So I'm gonna center this. We're going to also go to content. I don't know why for heading, the alignment is on the content section, but for the topography, it's actually on the style tab, really weird. And then for the center, I'll make this a little bit bigger, right? We'll make a really nice cool landing page, right? Sell your house. And then over here, we're going to go to style and center it, right? And same for the button, we're gonna center the button, right? So the button, we're also gonna center it. And voila, we now have a beautiful landing page that we have created in just a few seconds, right? Now, you can see that this is a web design website, but obviously, this is actually the same website and I just added a background image of, you know, property, right? So you can make any single website look like any other website simply by changing the colors and also the images. So let's say I wanna change the background image right here. At the top, I'll click on the little six dots. Now the six dots actually control the entire background of the actual section, right? So over here we have style, and this is where we can add a classic, classic color, right? We can add a gradient, right? So if you wanna add like a gradient here, we can throw in like a gradient of various colors, right? We can add a video background. So if you want a video background, you can add it right here. And then also they have a slideshow option where you can just like keep showing like random images. But I wanna select classic. And then here we have choose image. I can select my own image. In fact, there are also free images courtesy of the Astro theme. So Astro theme actually has an integration where they actually have an API selected with Pixabay. And you guys can just search for images for your website. So for example, I'll put real estate. And let's see what comes up here. Oh yeah, if you guys are at work, uh, make sure you have safe search on. So sometimes there's like people who post like really like kind of weird pictures of themselves or their body and it might look like nude pictures. But really quick, let's just do, let's just do houses here. Or no, office. Oh wait, wait that, that one's good, that one's good. Well, what, what was that? Wait, I think that was it, hold on, real estate. Real estate, I like that one. Okay, there it goes, now it's working, okay. So yeah, um, you can use these images. Now, let's say for example, you guys wanna change it to vertical or horizontal. So um, depending on the type of picture you, you want to showcase, there are vertical and then there are also horizontal as well. Horizontal are good for more like landing pages, right? And vertical are pictures more for like sections like my team or something like that, right? So you'll see these are vertical, right? So that's the difference between both. And then also they have tons of different categories you guys can choose. Now this is exclusive for the Astro theme, all right? So this is one feature that it comes with. And again, I'm gonna go to real estate here and we're gonna use that one that we saw right here, this beautiful house, right? We're gonna download that. And what I wanna do here, there we go. And there it is, sell your house. Look at that, we just converted this into a real estate website. Like how amazing is that? Congratulations, you guys have now created a beautiful landing page. But let's keep going, you know, we're not done yet, okay? So let's say for instance, you're on you know, this section and you wanna, you know, throw in some images, right? Well, I'll say, you know, let's put an image right here, you know? And whenever you upload an image, you can choose the image here and then you can upload any image, right? So, you know, these are actually demo images that you guys um, are given with the Astro theme. Now, this is actually an icon box. So if I click on it, you'll see this says icon box. So this actually comes with its own uh, icon box, but there is a little trick here. We can just delete that and say, you know what? I like the structure, but I don't, want the, I don't want the icon and I'll use this instead, you know? So there is no wrong way to use elements. You can see here how I'm using an icon box, but I actually don't even use the icon. And what I wanna do here is I wanna duplicate this button, right? And I wanna drag and drop it. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it right down here. Look at that. 
and I'm gonna put this to the left. And there's a little bit too much spacing here. You guys see that? And this might be in the advanced section. So here there is margin, and essentially margin is space, right? So we're gonna get rid of that. And there you go. We now have this beautiful section that we just created, you know? And you guys can delete sections, you can add more. It's really all about freedom, right? So you guys can right click and delete this, and then you can add in any elements that you want, like a heading text, right? So we have heading, we have the image, and then we also have the text editor. You guys totally get the point. Now, let's say you guys wanna add in your own section, right? I wanna add a new section in between this, right? Here is this little plus icon. And this is where you guys can add in a new section. You guys can also use templates for Elementor or templates for Astra. But let's just first go back to the basics here and click on add new container. All right, and then here we have a few options. We have the directional column down, right? And then we have two and they have this structure, but we're gonna use this one. Now, the Flexbox container is a little complicated for first time users. So these options right here are for uh, the Flexbox container. Now, I have a whole nother video that goes in detail about that, but for this video, I'm not gonna cover it. So I'm just gonna skip over it. You guys don't even need it really. So for instance, we can add in a header, right? And then add in the image, right? And then also add in a button. Now, notice here how these are sort of, um, you know, how this one actually has a lot more space. We can actually say, you know what? Give me some more space over here. So I'm gonna take this and put 33 and 33.3, right? And there we go, right? And then we can obviously change this, you know, we can change the background for this specific background, or we can change whatever we want right here, obviously. Now, if you guys do want to change the color of just this column, you'll click on the little column tab, style, and you guys can change like the color just for this specific column, you know? You guys can also change the color for the entire background behind it, right? So the same thing, style, classic, color, you know, Get the point? And a really cool option, ooh, 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 that, ooh, ooh, too much red. Now, let's say for example, you guys design this column and you don't wanna do it again, right? You guys can also duplicate columns, right? So I'm gonna right click, duplicate, right click and duplicate. And then over here, I'll delete these other columns. I no longer need them. You guys are, you guys are fired. And then you can just build out your website as usual, right? So you guys can mix and match elements. You can duplicate modules, copy and paste stuff. And as you guys can tell, you know, it's a very fluid drag and drop builder. Now I do have a video that goes over Elementor in detail. Um, I'll go ahead and leave it in the description. So here is the actual video. I'll go ahead and give you guys a little quick little overview. Now this video is about four and a half hours and I pretty much go over everything. We go over mobile optimization, we go over the flex box, how to create custom headers and footers, the pro versions, everything. As you guys can see, there's a lot of comments, a lot of people, they love it. Um, it's very well searched and found on the internet. So if you guys do want to master Elementor, I do recommend to watch this video. It is very in detail, you know, and I do that because I want to bring value. I don't want to leave you guys hanging and I don't want to cover Elementor in this video because obviously, um, you know, this video can get very, very long. So uh, I will refer you guys to that video. Now, uh, once you guys are done, you guys can just click on update here. And once that has been done, you guys can go up here and click on view page. And voila, this is now your beautiful website. And you'll see all the changes that we made are live, right? A little ugly, you know, not to worry. You know, you guys can go turn the builder on, delete those sections, whatever you want, knock yourself out, go have fun. So that is a crash course on how to use the Elementor page builder. Now, we also talked about the staff page and I promised you guys we would design this page and I'm not gonna let you guys, I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging, right? So I'm gonna click on edit page under the staff page and right here, I'll click on edit with Elementor. Once you guys do that, it'll actually propagate the Elementor page builder. Now, instead of actually building the website from scratch, we can use some pre-made blocks, right? Now Elementor has pre-made blocks guys, but they're really, really limited. I mean, they don't really even give you free ones anymore. Like these are all pro basically. If you guys look really, really hard, you guys can like find some blocks that are free. Like, okay, there's one right here. All right, yeah, I found that one. <laughs> you know, but they don't really give you um, a good amount of resources. Now, what I recommend doing here is actually using the Astra, uh, Astra blocks. So here you can 
basically import a whole page or click on the block section and voila, we now have all these blocks we can just slap on on our website. And you guys can actually filter these blocks. So for example, we have team, right? And then here we have different layouts for the team. They did a really good job. And we, what we can do here is I can click on one of these. And let's say I wanna import this. Here at the top, I'll click on import block. And look at that. We now have this beautiful section. So I'll put my staff, right, my staff. And then we can go ahead and adjust these images. For example, this is like, you know, your, you know, if this is someone, you know, your boss, whatever, just click on it, put your boss over there, right? And then voila, you got your boss right there. And then you can change this name to like Daryl Wilson, right? So go ahead and change this to Daryl Wilson. And he is the WordPress dude, all right? WordPress dude, all right? And then you can obviously change the text. Here, you can go ahead and click on these little icons and you can put your link right here, right? Really, really cool, really convenient, isn't it? So that's how you guys can use the Astra blocks to quickly create sections. And you guys can keep doing it. So let's say you want to add in another block, right? Just throw it in, right? Import it, and so on and so forth. As you guys can tell, it's super easy building websites, you know? And once you guys are done changing the page, you'll just click on update. All right, and then we'll click on view the page, and voila. Now if I click on the about section, and then I click on the staff, there we go. We now have this beautiful section that we have just created. How amazing is that? So that is a quick rundown of how to use the elements or page builder, how to use the templates, and also um, how to make your website really nice, you know, with the blocks and also with all of the elements Elementor has to offer. So now that we've actually learned how to use the Elementor page builder, there's one thing that I wanna talk about is the contact page. Now really quick, I wanna show you guys how to link this to your contact page. So for every button on your website, instead of actually linking them to the contact page, if you actually click on the elements and here you have link, right? You can just type in the name of the page. So like contact, and then here is the actual page and you'll see that it actually creates the link for you. So I'll click on update now and then I'll view the page. And then here I'll click on get started and this will link me directly to the contact us page. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the contact form. So for all your templates that you guys see on the Astro Charter templates, they all have contact forms. And these are actually integrated with WP Forms. WP Forms is a plugin that will propagate the contact form for you. And it's completely free. So let's go back over here to our dashboard. And you're gonna see WP Forms right here. Now this is the plugin that is propagating the contact form. So right here, you'll see contact form. And here I'll click on edit. So here is the contact form and it's very simple. If you guys do want to drag and drop elements, all you got to do is drag and drop these elements right here onto your contact form. So maybe you want to add in like phone numbers, right? So actually this is a little bit too big right here. So this is for paragraph. So I'm going to delete that, take this single text, drag it here. And all I'm going to do is put in phone number, all right? So phone number. And now that I've done that, you can see users can just go ahead and put in their phone number, right? So I'll go ahead and click on save. And all the changes that you make right here will propagate to your contact form on your contact page. Really, really cool, right? So what I'll do now is I'll click on save. I'll close this. And then let's take a look at our contact form. So over here, contact. And if we scroll down, you'll see that we have our name, our phone number, and then email and our message. Now there are options to get rid of this or put it in the box. There's tons of customization options. Now guys, really quick, I just want to mention that I do have a video on WP Forms plugin. It's also about an hour long. Now it goes through the free options, the pro options. It also talks about how to add reCAPTCHA just in case you guys don't want to get a bunch of, you know, Viagra pill offers, you know, all that crap. So it teaches you how to actually use this plugin really well. Also, if your emails go to spam, which is a very common WordPress problem, this plugin right here will actually show you how to route your emails from your server to your email inbox so your messages will not end up in spam. Now, I will leave this tutorial in the description. It is about an hour long, but you guys can actually just go to any chapter right here and go to any section that you want in this tutorial so you don't have to watch the whole thing.
okay? All right, cool, so congratulations. I'll show you guys how to uh, integrate your contact form and also how to edit it, right? And of course, if you guys wanna edit this, all you gotta do is click on edit with Elementor and you guys can edit this entire page however which way you guys want, right? Awesome. All right, so now let's click on the home page. All right, now I quickly wanna go over mobile optimization before we talk about the theme customizer. Now here at the top, let's click on edit with Elementor. Now you guys don't have to follow me here, but I just want to show you these options because many of you will have to optimize your website for mobile. Now on the bottom left, you're gonna see responsive mode. Now this is what our website looks like on a desktop. This is what it looks like on a tablet. And this is what it looks like here on a phone. Obviously we need a little bit of work. Now the Astro theme actually comes fully optimized, but if you guys do make custom sections, you might need to also optimize those for mobile devices. So for example, we have this section here, right? Now for the tablet, I'm gonna change this to 100%, right? And also I want to center align this. So right here, you'll see that how this says tablet portraits, I'm only editing this for the tablet. So I'm not editing this for the uh, desktop or the mobile, right? So I'll also click on this. And I also want to center align this as well. So over here in our style, make sure it's tablet, right? Click on center and voila. So now we have optimized this section for the uh, tablet. And if I click on this and go to style, and if I go to topography, you'll also see we can adjust the size of the text for each specific device as well. So for example, this is what it looks like on our, you know, for the tablets but we have not changed anything yet for the other devices. So just keep that in mind. Now you guys can see that this was pretty simple to do, right? You'll just go to the rest of your website and just optimize any section. Ugh, that section's ugly. Uh, so yeah, you guys will just go through here, you know, just take a look at anything. If it looks out of whack, you can optimize it for that specific device. You guys can also run this through the Google mobile friendly checker to see if your website is fully optimized by Google. But before we do that, let's just go over here to mobile portrait. And I think we need to reduce the size of this text, right? So over here, topography, we'll also reduce the size of this, you know? So we like just sell your house. And uh, yeah, if you scroll down, we'll see that, uh, you know, we'll get rid of this image, you know, I just, I don't like it. Now, one thing I wanna reiterate here, guys, if you delete this, it'll delete it for all devices. Now, if you want specific elements to only show for specific devices, you can do that. For example, if I click on the advanced section and I scroll down and I go to responsive, you can actually have elements only show per specific device. Now there is a lot of strategy here and I do talk about this in my elementary video. Um, essentially, you guys can have different landing pages for different devices, right? I mean, there's a lot you can do with this. So uh, I'll just say I want to hide this on mobile, right? I don't wanna show that on mobile, no reason to. And we'll scroll down, you'll see that everything else looks fantastic and it looks great. Okay, so you guys will need to go through the website if you made a lot of changes and just edit them for specific devices. So this is our website on the tablets and then also for the, I don't know why, I don't know why it keeps doing that, pushing us down there, let's delete that, it's ugly, ew. But yeah, so there you go. So we have now optimized the uh, landing page for the desktop for tablets and then for the mobile device. Now, if you guys want to get Google certification, all you gotta do is take your domain right here and then we'll go to Google. So here I typed in Google mobile friendly test. Just click on the first link that pops up and then just throw in your URL right there and then test the URL. All right, so the page is usable on mobile. We got the green checkbox and our website is fully mobile responsive. And that's very important because you always wanna make sure that your visitors have a good experience on your websites. So that is pretty much it for the mobile optimization. So now let's go ahead and talk about what we've all been waiting for is the Astro theme customization options. All right, so now that we know how to use the page builder and our website's up and running, now let's explore the theme options. So we're first gonna cover the Astra free version. So we're gonna go through all the options and I'll explain how to fully utilize the free version of Astra. There is a lot to cover. So in this part of the video, we're gonna go through each one and fully explain what all the features do with the Astra thing. You guys ready? Let's go. All right, so now let's go over the Astra theme options. So here at the top, Let's click on customize. Okay. 
Now, when you first open up the theme customizer, you'll be greeted with several options. Now, these options right here are generally referring to Astra, and these are like the core WordPress um, options that come with every single theme. So first off, let's go over here and click on global. Now you have all these options right here and we'll go through each one and explain what they do and how they work. So the first one is topography. So obviously you guys can go ahead and change the topography on your entire website. Now this will actually override the Elementor page builder. You will come to find that a lot of the theme settings contradict or go against the Elementor page builder. And this is very common and normal for all WordPress websites, right? So you can, you know, set presets here. So now we have base font, and the base font is basically like the base font, right? So for example, you can change the font for just the body, and then also you can change it for um, the heading text as well. So here you'll see that this changed the base font right here. And then also we have heading fonts, which will change the heading font for all the fonts on your website, which is pretty cool. So over here, I'll put poor story, right? Yeah, there you go. It's a This went really ugly really fast, guys. Jeez, I mean the, the font is such a huge impact on your website, you know. So, let's let's change that back right there. You know, let's go ahead and change all that back. So we have uh Poppins and we're going to put bold. Let's put Poppins bold. You know, Poppins bold looks so much better when it's bolded, right? Now, here we have H1 through H6 tags. Now, when you guys are building your website, here I'll click on this other page I created for this part of the video. When you guys are building your website, you're gonna come to find that each of these can be changed to different H tags. So let me go ahead and show you guys. So here is the page options. Now, instead of using Elementor, there is alternatives to use the default block editor. So essentially, this is basically applying to a lot of the header tags on your website. Now, for example, if I double click on this header tag, you'll see H2, right? So what this option is referring to saying this will only change the H2 fonts. Now over here, if I double click, you'll see we can change this to H1 all the way to H6. And depending on what you select, um, you can change the font for that specific header. So for example, for the H3 fonts, which is this one here, right? I can change the font specifically for this one, right? Do you guys see that? So um, this is basically saying I want to change it only for that specific H3 tag. And you can do this in conjunction with the Elementor page builder and also the Gutenberg blocks as well. So um, yeah, that is pretty much it for the heading fonts. And then also for the paragraph margin bottom, you guys can choose also to add margin for specific paragraphs, but this is mainly applying for Gutenberg only. A lot of these options are only for Gutenberg and it's hard to know, you know, where it affects on your website. So I totally understand. And then also here, you guys can underline content leaks. So if you guys do have a link anywhere in your contents, like you'll see this one here, um, it'll add an underline to anything with a link in it, right? So that is the topography option summed up. Pretty simple, right? Pretty easy to understand. And if you guys wanna just, you know, go back to the reset, you would just click on that arrow and that will reset the options, all right? All right, next we have colors. Okay, if you guys do wanna change the color palette of your website, like I showed you guys earlier, you guys can do that right here. So we have style two, all right? Let's see style two, it looks like it changed a little bit, and then style three. It is very similar, I can tell, yeah, you guys can see it, it is, it is very similar. Okay, now also if you guys wanna change the colors, so for example, here you'll see the um, theme color, right? So the basic color is this color here, and you guys can change that to something like black, right? And it'll apply for all of the options with the ascents on it. And then also you have links, right? So you can change the color for the links, and then also when you hover over them as well, right? And then also they have the option for heading, which is H1 through H6. Like we talked about earlier, you guys can choose to have a uh, custom color for all of your H tags, or you can customize each one individually. Here we have the body text. Now just remember, this is more going to apply for the uh, Gutenberg page builder. So here you'll see that this is H2, right, H3. So you guys can choose either to, you know, customize each one individually, or if you want all of them to be one color, you guys can click on here and then change them all to one specific color. It's really up to you. And you can do the same thing for the body text as well. And then also, if you guys do have any borders on your website, which I don't think we did add any borders here, um, you guys can also add borders here and then change the color for your specific border. 
All right, now here we have site background. Now, since we are using Elementor on this page, now, since we are using Elementor for our background here, the site options are really gonna only display for the page where we didn't use Elementor. So it'll propagate more on this page here. So for example, here I have site, site ground back color. We can change this to teal, right? And then also we can change the color for this background, right? So blue, right? Okay. And uh, yeah, so that is essentially the color summed up. Pretty simple, right? And if, again, if you guys ever want to view this on you know different devices, you guys can just go ahead and you know check that out. Now, really quick, I just want to show you guys how to uh, create a page without using the Elementor options. So notice here, I've already created this page and I've already propagated it before the tutorial. Just go up here to plus new and page, and this will be like you know new demo page. Okay, so we have our Laurel Ipsum. And of course, if you guys wanna add more, just click on the block here. You can add a paragraph, right? And then this is, you know, more text and so on and so forth. Now, this is Gutenberg and this is the default editor. And to be quite honest, I don't think it's ready yet to build websites with. It is very good for the post options. Like if you wanna create blog posts, it's fantastic. But building full on websites with this editor, I think it has a long way to go, guys. I'm just, you know, giving my two cents out there. But uh, as you can see, we built this page, right? And if I click on publish and publish, you'll see that I can now view this page, okay? So that is essentially um, how to create a page and then use the Astro options with this specific style of building your websites. Uh, I'm not a big advocate for it. You know, I think Elementor is way easier to use than this block editor. As you guys can tell, it's, you know, it's pretty obvious. I don't have to convince you guys, right? So let's go back over here to global, right? And here we have container. Now, again, container will only apply if you have chosen to use the default options with the Astra theme and Gutenberg and not using Elementor. So you can change it to narrow, right? Or full width. Okay, or you can make it unboxed. Here, you, you gotta use normal with unboxed, right? Or narrow with unboxed. Or you can use the box layout, right? So it really depends on you know what you wanna do. And then if you want specific options, you guys can actually uh, choose, wait, hold on, let me do normal here. If you guys want specific layouts, you guys can select it like that, right? Okay, you see that? All right. And then also for the narrow content width, you guys will need to select the narrow option and then you can actually choose to like set the narrow option, you know, for the content within that, right? So again, this is basically applying only for the options. Now guys, I'll be very honest. I hate to be an advocate against Astra, but these options on the pro are useless because you can literally just change the, you know, container width out here instead, right? So basically what these options here are in the pro version is they're just more preset conditions, but you can use the full width layout. In fact, right here, it says full width layout in the pro, but there is the option to make this full width. <laughs> so it's it's uh, it's one feature that I'll talk about later that I don't think is really necessary because you can literally make the theme uh, full width just with the container width layout, right? But uh, yeah, I'm just the middle guy, all right? I'm just showing you guys what this does, all right? So I'm just passing it on, right? All right, so that is the container. Buttons, all right, let's go back to home. Okay, now if you guys want to set preset buttons, for example, I'll click on the button, you'll see the buttons have now all changed, right? And you can change those however you want. And then you can also adjust the text color, the background color, and you can design and customize the buttons throughout your website all from one location. Now, do I like doing this? No, because I think this contradicts the Elementor Builder and also the elements on your websites. And it can get a little messy when you're trying to have different buttons for uh, different areas, right? Because for example, maybe this button, you don't want it the same as your header, right? Well, this option kind of overrides that. So it can contradict your page builder settings. So just be mindful, you know, I am not a big fan of this option. In fact, if I do want to edit this button, I would rather use the header builder, right? But uh, I'm just saying that you guys can customize all the buttons on your website from one location here, okay? So just keep that in mind, you know, that these builder, I'm sorry, these settings do sort of contradict each other and they work against each other. So that's just something to remember, all right? Let's go back here, scroll to top. This is an amazing option. What we can do is turn this on and at the bottom right when I scroll, 
you'll see we have this cool little scroll to top and users can actually scroll right back to the top. Really smooth, really cool. And you can turn this on all devices. You can add it to the left side or the right side and even change the size of this. Woo, look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> Wait, how big can we make this? Let's do a thousand pixels. Okay, you know, guys, I'm sorry. That was, that was unprofessional. All right, we'll, we'll just do 25, right? And then for the design, you guys can change the icon color to like black, right? And, uh, or let's just keep it white. And then change the background here to black. There we go, all right? So you guys get the uh, picture, right? So this is basically the color, and then this is the hover color. So when someone hovers over it, it can change the color. Now, border radius, this essentially just turns it into like a, basically a circle, right? So for example, if I do 25, 25, 25, and 25, Wait, no too much. Now it's a circle, right? But you guys can adjust the border radius, which controls the outside of the elements, okay? I think we're gonna leave that here. What do you guys think? Yeah, let, let's leave it. You know, it made the cut. We're gonna keep that little thing, you know, but let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's do like a 20, okay, cool. So that is the scroll to top, okay? Accessibility. Guys, I have no idea what this does. I looked everywhere through their theme options, through their documentation. I looked everywhere. I have no clue what it does. If you guys do, let me know in the comments below and I will love to hear what it does because I looked everywhere for it and I could not find any documentation on this whatsoever. So we're gonna skip this. All right, and now we have the block editor. This is essentially going to uh, add spacing in between these elements. So. Um, it doesn't add much, right? So there's like compact, there's comfort, and then there is like custom where you can add specific um, padding in between elements for the Gutenberg section. It is helpful, but you can always do this within the page builder. But if you guys do wanna add custom core block spacing in between these elements, you guys can do that right here. Okay, so that is the block editor spacing. And then we have miscellaneous, which is smooth scroll. Cool, so you guys can turn on smooth scroll on your websites. So for example, if you guys are scrolling through a website, it's kind of like jagged, you know, it's like, you know, like that sometimes on some devices or on some browsers. If you turn on smooth scroll, it should smoothly scroll down very smoothly. See that, Woo. very smooth. So smooth scroll is always a good option to add, right? And there's a lot of plugins for this. And with Astra, you get it for free, cool. So those are the global options summed up. Pretty simple, pretty easy to use. So those are the global options with the free version of Astra. There are some upgrades in the global section, but I don't think they're worth upgrading, but we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Next, let's talk about the header builder. Now the header builder with Astra is amazing. It's probably the best part about the Astra theme. So with Astra, what you guys can do is you guys can actually uh, add in elements. So for example, here, I'll click on something and we'll throw in social icons like I showed you guys earlier, right? We'll drag that up here at the top, right? Really cool, Ooh, look at that, right? And also we can add in more. So here we can add in Gutenberg blocks. So for example, we have a widget, right? I'll click on got it. And here we can add in something, right? So for example, I'll click on browse all. And here we can actually use the uh, Gutenberg blocks. Now, if you guys add a plugin to add more widgets, you guys can all add these to the header, right? Which is pretty, pretty cool. So for example, if you want to, let's see what we can add in here, guys. Um, we can add in, let's see what we can add in something cool, a search box, right? So a search is always helpful, right? So we can add a search. The one thing is, guys, is that a lot of these elements, they're kind of clunky, as you can tell, like a lot of them are made for the actual page. So they're kind of hard to add in with a lot of bit of work you know, a lot of work. You can probably make them uh, fit really well. I'll add in another widget right here, okay? And this could be like paragraph. So this will be like phone number. And then I'll take this and I'll drag it to the top left, right? And then for the design tab, we can design this, right? So I'll make this white. I'm sorry, the content color white. And then, you know, we'll put in like uh, our phone number is like 1877. Okay, something like that, right? I mean, you, you guys get the point. So we can add in those widgets and then drag and drop them around our header and stuff like that. So yeah, the widgets are pretty cool. They do give you a lot of flexibility, but uh, some of them could be very clunky. So when you are using the blocks, just be mindful, you know, go through each one, see if it works out. And if it doesn't work out for you, you can always use the Astro widgets. I think they're a lot more stable and easier to, to work with, right? 
Okay, so as you guys can tell, you guys can go ahead and just, you know, drag and drop widgets. You guys can add more to your menu. Now, if you guys do want to customize one, all you got to do is click on the elements. And on the left side, you have the general tab. This is where you can basically change the content of the elements, right? So you can put the link here to your contact page, right? Or open this in a new tab. Now here we have the design tab. Earlier I talked about the global colors and the global options, and I kind of don't recommend that because what we can do here is we can individually customize this button without affecting all the other buttons on our website, right? So if I wanna make this something like pink, right? And then also change the hover to pink as well, right? Let's see here. We can uh, tell you what here. I'll copy this, right? We'll copy that, and then I'll click on the hover and make sure it's the same, right? Okay. So now we have this pink button, right? Pretty cool. So you can design the button for the entire uh, header right here. So instead of actually doing the button global, you can just do it here individually without affecting all the buttons on your websites. Okay. Makes sense. All right. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the transparency for our header. You guys might notice here, if I click on the header, that we're actually using a transparent menu, and we can't really add any options here for the background. You guys can actually disable the transparent header, or you guys can customize it further. Now, when I click on the actual header, you'll see at the bottom right here, it says transparent header. This is where we can further customize and design the transparent header on our websites. Now there is an option to enable this on the entire websites. And what that means is if I go to other pages on the websites, the transparent header will propagate on all of the pages throughout our websites. If you want the transparent options for specific pages, you guys can set that here. So here you can see I can disable the transparent header on the 404, right? or disable it on the latest posts and so on and so forth. And then I can enable it also on different devices. You guys can also choose to use a logo for a transparent header as well. So really quick, I'll just change this image, right? So I'm gonna use something else here. Let's go ahead and find an image here. So we can use this one right here because this is a PNG. So I'm gonna use this one right here. And there we go, we got our logo. Pretty cool, right? Awesome. So now we have the logo on our websites and we can keep, you know, we can further customize it. We can make the logo larger and stuff like that. But let's go back over here to our transparent header. And again, we have the options to further design the options on the transparent header, okay? Now let's say for instance, you guys don't wanna use the transparent header, which some of you might not, right? We can actually disable this on the page settings. So really quick, let's close out of this. And here, I'll click on edit page. Now on the top right, you're gonna see this Astra page settings options. So there are further options for Astra on every single page. What I wanna do here is I wanna to scroll to the bottom and go to advanced settings. And here I can disable the transparent header, right? Then I'll click on return to post. There's other options here where you guys can disable other elements, like you can disable the footer, disable the header, and then disable the banner area as well. And then also, if you guys are using Gutenberg, you guys can use specific different page container options if you guys are using Gutenberg. But in our case, we're using Elementor, so these options really don't apply to us. So I'll click on Update, and then I'll click on View the Page. All right, so now you'll see that the transparent header is gone. And what we can do is we can now actually customize this header up here. So now let's click on the header builder. And instead of actually using the icons here, here we have these gear icons. So there are three essential rows with Astra. There's the top row, there is the primary header, and then there is the below header. And what you guys can do is you guys can actually have three different rows. And for each row, you guys can change the height, right? So here we can change the height. And then also we can change the background color, right? So we can add a background color here. Or if you guys wanna get really creative and clashy, you guys can use like a, a, a gradient, right? So here we can use a gradient, right? For our top, okay? And then there are other options here, like we can add more padding, which is more space. We can add in margin and so on and so forth. So you guys can go through these options here and fully customize this specific row. Now let's say you wanna customize the second row. The same options apply. You guys can choose the heights, design, and then you can also design the second row. 
Pretty cool, right? So for example, if you wanna add in like a color here to the second row, you guys can do that. And then also for the third row as well, where you guys can also fully customize and design the third row as well for your websites, right? So, so you guys can go ahead and fully customize each row right here and give it distinct colors and features if you wanna get really creative. Now, if you guys decide to actually take a button out here and get rid of it, the row will disappear, right? Because there's no elements in that column. So now that entire row disappears, okay? But um, overall, I would say you guys can make some pretty creative headers, right? So here, we'll, we'll go ahead and shrink this down a little bit more. And I do like this, actually. I do like this header with that grade. It's really sharp, actually. I think I do like that. Here, let's go ahead and close that. And let's take a look. And there you go. So now you'll see that we have this beautiful website and we have a really nice header that we can fully customize. Got it? All right, so let's go back over here to customize. All right, now the next thing I wanna show you guys is the canvas mode. So if you guys actually click on the tablet right here, there are further options here to design your menu for mobile devices. All right, so you guys will see that we have this menu right here. And if you guys do wanna customize each specific menu for different devices, here we have the off canvas menu, right? So we have that gear icon and we can change like the content alignment right here, right? We can make this full screen. So if someone clicks on this, it'll go full screen or it could be fly out or drop in, right? So they're just different animations basically, right? Now the next option is the background. So over here on the design tab, we have background. Now it's really hard to find out where this, you know, displays. You actually have to go over here to general, full screen, design, and this is where you guys can design the background, right? So if I click on this, now you'll see that there's a, a more like, you know, blue background and you can change that to black or whatever else you want, right? And then there's the, close icon color, which you can design here as well. And then also you can change the pop-up padding, which is basically the space. So you can do all that right here through these options. All right. And again, we can also do this for the mobile as well, right? So now we're in mobile view, right? And what we'll do is we'll click on this again. And here we have some options, right? We got menu two, right? Menu three, pretty cool, right? Toggle outline, huh? All right, minimal. Yeah, I guess you guys have different styles you guys can use, you know? Uh, label menu, menu, all right? You guys can do that as well. You can add in some little text for your mobile menus. And then also here for the design. And then you guys can knock yourself out here and go through all these options and fully design the menu for mobile devices, right? So as you guys can tell, the Header Builder with Astra is very robust, and I think this is probably the best thing about Astra. Now, I would recommend upgrading to the Pro because with the Pro, you get options to add in more elements, and you also get the sticky header option, which is pretty cool, right? So um, we'll talk more about that later. But yeah, that is pretty much the Header Builder with Astra in a nutshell. It's a great header builder, tons of features, really simple to use, and as you can tell, you know we built a really nice custom header in a matter of minutes. All right, so that is the header builder, which is a majority of this WordPress theme, <laughs> to be honest, guys. So if you know the header builder, you pretty much know Astra. So next we have breadcrumbs. And breadcrumbs, you know, guys, it's just, I don't know, like this, right? So you can add breadcrumbs here that show little breadcrumbs and links throughout your website. But I mean, they already have the menu, guys. Like, yeah, but if you wanna add breadcrumbs, you can display it on blog posts, on searches, on your homepage. You can add these little breadcrumbs, which is essentially navigation, right? So if you wanna help navigate your users with breadcrumbs, you guys can go ahead and do that and turn those on and then have them apply on various parts of the websites. In fact, in fact, the only place I would use breadcrumbs is probably on the single posts. That is probably it, right? So let's turn all these off right here. And we're just gonna post this only on the single post. And we'll talk more about that when we use the blog, right? Okay, and then also you can design the arrows here, right here for the separator, all right? So you guys can fully design that. I'll show you guys where this propagates in just a bit. But anyways, now we have the blog. So in order to actually go through the blog, we need to first create a blog page. So let's do that. Here, click on publish. And now let's close that. And what we're first gonna do is we're now gonna create a blog page. Now, what we're going to actually create here is a page for the blog post to propagate. So this is gonna be the blog, right? I'll click on publish and publish, okay? And then I'm going to click on the WordPress logo and I wanna add this to the menu really quick. So appearance, menus, blog, 
add to menu. Cool, there it is, blog. Then I'll save the menu, okay? Now what we can do is we need to assign the blog page as our actual blog page. Because if you guys click on it, nothing shows up. So let's click on customize here. And you guys remember the homepage settings? We're gonna come back to that. Homepage settings, post page, we're not gonna select blog, okay? And if you guys do create blog posts, they will all propagate now on the blog page. Pretty cool. All right, and here is our blog, right? So we have our blog post that I created, but let me show you guys how to create a blog post because I didn't really show you guys that and um, I just kind of did it on my own free will. So if you guys do want to create a blog post, all you got to do is let's go over here to our dashboard. And then here under post, you'll see all posts. So here you can just, you know, add a new post. And this will be like five things dudes love about women, right? Something, you know, something to, to make you click on it, right? And then here, I'll just obviously throw in some demo text. So I'll just click on the plus. And then here, I'll just put in some text. We can use the paragraph, I guess. And then here, we'll just throw in some demo content. All right, so we threw in some demo contents. And then if you wanna throw in some images, just press enter here, plus throw in some images, right? Put a little image. We'll use our media library, right? Then I'll just throw in an image here, right? We'll just throw this in just, you know, just to add images and the contents to make it interactive, right? Press enter here, dash image. And then I'll put it in another image right here. Here we go. And most importantly, guys, we need to select a featured image. So a featured image is the image that pretty much represents the article, right? So over here, I'll click on post. I'll scroll down and here under featured image, I wanna make sure that we add a featured image for this, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a picture of this girl. Oh no, we already did that here, this one right here, okay? And that's our featured image, okay? And now we just gotta click on publish and publish. And then I'll click on view posts. Five things dudes love about women. Here's our featured image. We have our content, our images. And of course, you know, that is our entire article, right? Pretty cool, right? So you guys can use this to create posts. And um, yeah, so now that we have posts, now let's actually use Astra to clean this up a little bit, you know, to make it more organized and stuff like that. So over here, I'll click on customize. Astra actually is pretty helpful when it comes to the blog. So right here, I'll first click on blog. And this is our blog, okay? And now we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the blog archive. And here we can actually control like the actual container size, right? So we can make this narrow, right? Like a little bit smaller, right? Or full width, okay? Now here we have the blog title. So here's the layout, right? So you guys can choose layout one, which is essentially a pretty clean layout. You know, it's just a basic, nice layout. Then you have layout two. And layout two, you know, it does need a little bit of work. So uh, right here, you'll see that the blog is a little bit too high right there. So I probably wanna bring that down, right? It's really, really high up there. Um, what we can first do here is we can choose to design the blog title, right? So our blog. And then here we can add in some description. Welcome to our blog. Okay, now I know it looks weird right now, don't worry, okay? So we have our blog, welcome to our blog. And then we also, we can change the alignment there to the right, to the left, and so on and so forth, right? I have no idea why this is way high up here, but what we can do here is we can actually move it, right? So now it looks a lot cleaner here. All right, so there we go. We added in some space right there, right? So now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and push this blog post up a little bit more, right? So if I scroll down, you're gonna see margin. And I wanna add negative margin, right? So I wanna actually force this to come up a little bit more. So I'm gonna put minus 200. And then you'll see that I added this look right here to our blog where, you know, I pushed the blog post up a little bit more and add some margin. Now also there's other options here to change the container layout for your blog. So that was narrow, right? We can also do normal and then also full width right here as well. So you can change the layout for your blog posts, right? So now it's like, you know, normal. I do like narrow. It's just a little bit more compact and cleaner as you guys can tell, right? And below that, if you guys do wanna add a sidebar, you guys can like add like a right sidebar here. Uh, you guys will need to actually 
change the container layout to default if you guys do want to add a sidebar, right? So now you'll see that our sidebar propagates. And then we can add things here, like we can add share boxes or whatever. Um, here I'll click on this widgets. And remember earlier how we actually used the Gutenberg builder, right? So you guys can go ahead and add in blocks right here. Uh, I do recommend doing this from the back end. As you guys can tell, uh, Gutenberg is pretty messy, right? So to do all this from right here would be a little tough, right? But you guys can go ahead and add in widgets right here to your sidebar. I'll show you guys where to do this in just a bit, but I don't wanna, you know, go far too off topic here. So let's just stay on the blog, right? And below that, we have sidebar layout, like I showed you guys. And we could have this unboxed, see unboxed, or we can have it boxed. All right, all right. And then just like default, I guess, okay. And you guys can also adjust the custom width, right? So if you guys wanna change the custom width here, you guys can do that. And then post structure. So notice here how we have the featured image first, the title and blog meta. We can actually mix and match that. So for example, if you want the title above the actual featured image, you guys can do that, which I think actually looks pretty cool actually. You guys can also turn on the author. See the author right there and then the date and then the tag if you added a tag, right? So we have the date now and then also the tag. And then for the post content, you guys can use excerpt or you guys can use full content, which shows all the contents in the actual post. But I think most people here would just use excerpt, right? Makes sense. Now in the pro version, there are some more options like different blog layouts and other options. Um, it's a 50-50, you know, personally for the pro, I think it's can be helpful, but we'll talk about the uh, pro in the very next section, all right? So now that I showed you guys everything about the actual blog, now let's talk about the single post, okay? So here I'll click on a post. And here under single post, what we can do is we can do all the same things as we did before. So we can choose the normal style, we can choose narrow, right? Or full width, okay? So all the options that we had earlier for the blog, they are all right here as well. So if you wanna add a right sidebar, you can do that right here for the blog post, right? And here we have more options like we saw earlier. We have the sidebar style, the content width, then we can also enable related posts. Related posts are just other posts on your blog that you create, and you can recommend these posts at the bottom of your blog posts. And what's really cool is you guys can change like the title alignment here. You guys can, you know, add in like a one column grid or two column grid. And this is only for your related posts. So this section right here controls all your related posts and there are tons of options. So you guys can fully customize all of the related post options here. And then you can even add in post excerpt, which will show more excerpt here at the bottom of the related posts. Pretty cool, right? All right. Now let's go ahead and scroll all the way back up. And then here we have design. So if you guys do want to further design this, you guys can change the section title, right? Section background. And then the content colors, the section title font, and so on and so forth. So this is basically referring to the color and then the title and you can change all of the options here for the blog post. I don't need to go through each single one. I think you guys can understand what this is just by looking at the title, right? I mean, <laughs> I hope so. You know, I hope you guys are still with me here. All right. So that is the single post options. It is pretty cool, right? You guys can, you know, customize the single post. Now also you can design the post title as well. And there are two different layouts like the first one. So we have Banner layout one and banner layout two, which interesting, right? And you guys can go ahead and mix and match the structure here. So if you want the title below the featured image, you can do that, right? So now the title's right here. And then you can turn these on and off, and then you can change the alignment of the title right there just by simply messing around with these options, right? So the post title and the blog archive are the same exact options. You'll just need to go through each of them to find out which one works best for you. And then once you're done, just click on publish and those options are saved. So Astra can be very helpful for the blog. I do think there are better blog features with other themes out there, but I think most of us don't really need all these advanced features. I think Astra gives us the basics that we need to just start a general blog, right? So uh, let's go ahead and go back. And that is pretty much the blog section, right? Pretty simple. Now also we have page. And we did talk about page earlier when we talked about the Astra options. 
So again, this just controls like the size of the page here, right? So we have narrow, full width, and then we have normal. All right, and the next option is the sidebar. If you guys do wanna add a sidebar here to any page, you can add it here as well. I'm not really sure why they gave us so many options to add the sidebar, but you know, this is just another option for the sidebar. I think it's a little repetitive because I do believe the same options here are under page where they also give you the option for a sidebar. I think they should probably take this option out just because they've already added it in. But the reason why they added it here as well is because they wanna give you more options here to design the sidebar with but they probably should have added this in the other section. So yeah, that's uh, what you guys can do here is you guys can choose to add in more sidebars to your website, right? Fun for everybody. And lastly, we have the footer builder. Now the footer builder is the same thing as the header builder, except it's just the footer, right? So if you guys know how to use the header builder, then you guys know how to use the footer builder. So here you can see that Astra has created widgets right here where you know, they just added in some text, they threw in their little image right here, and they just put in some demo content, right? So you guys can go here, click on plus, and you guys can add in elements. Um, here they actually give you a max of four widgets to add, and they've already added in the social, and then they also added in the copyright. So they are using all the elements that you're allowed to use for the footer builder. But if you guys wanna start from scratch, what we can do is delete all these right here, so if you guys do wanna start from scratch, all you gotta do is click on the plus. You can add widget area one right here, right? And right here, all you gotta do is click on this and then you can add in your own content right here. So like, for example, Daryl Wilson first started in his apartment and is now teaching full time at home. All right, cool. And then over here, we can add another widgets, right? Widget two, okay. And again, you guys can change this widget to anything, right? So they're using the navigational menu, but you guys can use anything, right? So this is the navigational widgets, and all you gotta do is select your primary menu, and then it will propagate, or it should propagate your prior, there we go, all right, it should propagate your primary menu. But you guys can change this, you don't have to use this. So if I click on the, um, if I click on the element here, we can go ahead and delete this, and we can add in any element we want, right? So you don't have to use the default ones. You guys can go here and use the Gutenberg blocks for your uh, footer, right? All right, but you know what? I'll go ahead and delete that. And widget two, I like the default one they gave us. It's pretty cool. All right, we gotta, we gotta close this menu here. Let's see here, okay. All right, sometimes it gets glitchy, guys. Yeah, so I had to close out, all right? So um, now that I've shown you guys how to do this, we can also design the color. Now for each specific row, you guys can have columns, right? So for example, here we have four columns, but we can select three columns or two columns, right? And for each specific row, you guys can have different layouts with as many columns as you want. So they do give you a lot of options to add in tons of widgets. And I believe in the pro version, they give you more, right? But for example, if you guys just say, hey, you know, over here, I wanna add in a, a three column row, right? And then change the design here to, so there is our footer right there. And then of course we can change this to, you know, or add a widget here. And then if you wanna add in a fourth widget, all you'd have to do here is go back to general and then change the column width. And then here we can squeeze in that fourth column. So there we add in our four, and then here we'll add in the next one, so now you'll see that we have four beautiful widgets and what we can do is finish this off by adding in our copyright here at the bottom. And of course, if you guys want to design this, all you gotta do is click on it, go to the options, you can change the color, the text color, and so on and so forth. But voila, we have just created a beautiful footer using the Astra Footer Builder, right? Makes sense? All right, cool, hope you guys are with me. And now let's go ahead and click on back. And I think that is pretty much everything for the Astra theme. Now there are some basic WordPress core options like site identity. And here we can add in our site icon and we're gonna add this A, right? Now this will actually show up in the browser. So you see here at the top, we have these little icons. This will actually show up right here. So I'll click on crop image. And when I refresh this guys, this will actually show our new little site identity icon, which is really cool. Here we have menus, which is just the menus for our websites. 
we have widgets. Now, our theme actually places the widgets in specific areas, so they don't display there. In fact, the widget section is actually becoming more depreciated. We're not really using it too much. We have the home page settings, which we've already set. And then we have the additional CSS. This is more for developers. So if you guys don't know what this is, just leave it alone, right? And that is pretty much it for the Astra free options. Let's go ahead now and click on publish. So that is pretty much it for all the Astra free options in this part of the tutorial. Now in the next section, we're gonna be upgrading to Astra Pro and I'll be showing you all the pro features that come with the Astra theme. So now that we know how to use all the features in the free version of the Astra theme, now let's go ahead and talk about the Pro. So in this part of the video, I'll be purchasing the Pro version of Astra, and then we'll give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison and explain exactly what you get if you guys do decide to upgrade to the Pro version of the Astra theme. We'll also be showing you how to install the starter templates and also how to install the Pro version of the Astra theme in this section of the video. You guys ready? Let's go. All right, so in this part of the video, I'll be doing a side-by-side -side comparison and explaining exactly what you get in the free versus the pro, and I'll give you a visual demonstration. But before we go into this, guys, I first want to talk about the pricing with Astra because it can be very confusing. Now, if you guys do want to purchase Astra or the starter templates, there is a link in the description of this video, and it'll take you to a page that looks just like this right here. So this is WPAstra.com, and this is where you can purchase the Astra Pro uh, plugin and also the starter templates. Now on the top, you'll see their starter templates, pro features and all this other stuff, but I want you guys to go over here to pricing and I'm gonna explain how the pricing works. I'll be very honest guys, it, it, it is a little confusing for <laughs> first time users, including myself. I was like, wait a minute, there's two different plugins? Why, you know? So here we go, we have three different plans. The first plan is the Astra Pro. Now this only gives you the Astra Pro features. It does not give you the starter templates, all right? So all those beautiful templates that said pro on it, you don't get that with the Astra Pro, but you do get all of the premium features with Astra Pro. And this is also available for unlimited websites. So you can put this on as many websites as you guys want, and you also get support with those websites as well. And this is a subscription for the year, pretty cool. The second is the Essential Bundle. This is where you get Astra Pro, and you also get all the starter templates. So all those beautiful templates that you saw that said Pro on it, you get access to all of those, right? You also get access to their plugin, WP Portfolio plugin. And uh, yeah, I've never really used it, guys, so I'm not really gonna advocate for it. I never used it. So maybe it's cool. Maybe it's not. I don't know. You can go check it out. Right. And um, yeah, that is the essential bundle. And the third is the growth bundle. And this gives you access to Astra Pro, the essential um, templates, or I'm sorry, the, um, the templates that you saw, the premium templates, and it also gives you access to all of their plugins. So it gives you access to Convert Pro plugin, Schema Pro, and all these other really cool plugins that they offer. Now, again, I am not advocating for the growth bundle because I personally have not used a lot of these plugins. So I really can't tell you that it's like a great deal or something because I just haven't used them and I just didn't really, uh, I'm sure they're great. You know, they make a lot of great products. I just haven't used it. So that is the difference between all three packages. So Astro Pro, no templates, Astro Pro with templates and Astro Pro with templates and all future products. Now they also do have a lifetime as well. So if you guys don't wanna pay every single year, you guys can pay for their lifetime. And I think their lifetime is pretty fair actually, right? So you do get Astro Pro with the lifetime. And again, this is for unlimited websites, which is very good, right? And also you get support on all those websites. Pretty cool. Then you have the essential bundle, which gives you the Astra Pro, right? And also their starter templates. And it also gives you access to future templates as well. So anything that they create in the future, you get access to all of those as well. And then also the growth bundle, same exact thing. You get access to all their products and Astra and their starter templates all for about 937. All you'll do is just click on buy now. Here they're offering their add-on. I think Elementor is like the most popular one. So I'm gonna select Elementor here. So once you guys select the package, it'll bring you to this page right here where you guys can uh, select VIP care. This essentially just gives you support faster, priority support. So if you guys have a problem and you want the answer right now, like there you go, you can check VIP care. You can pay with PayPal or credit card. And uh, yeah, once you guys do this, um, I'll go ahead and meet you in the My Account. Now you also might have noticed that you're on a new website called Brainstorm Force. This is perfectly normal. This is their sister company or their main company that manages all of their products. So once you guys go ahead and purchase the plan, I will then meet you in the account section. All right, so here is their website and here is the account. 
And if you guys are logged in and you have purchased something, you can go to downloads right here. And here we have Astra Pro, and then we have the premium starter templates, and then you also have their other plugins as well. Now, I'm not gonna cover these in this video just because these are whole different plugins that deal with whole different purposes. So we're just gonna focus on the Astra Pro and their starter templates. So this right here, the Astra Pro plugin add-on, this actually gives you access to Astra Pro itself. If you guys also want the templates, you'll also need to install this second plugin as well, which is the premium starter templates plugin. So I'll go ahead and also download this one right here. And then we'll go over here to plugins and go to add new, upload plugin, and then we're going to upload both of those plugins. So I'll click on choose file. Okay, and here are the two plugins. We have the Astra add-on, which is the Astra Pro, and then you also have the Astra premium starter sites. So I'll click on this one here. I'll open it, then I'll click on install now. All right, I'll activate the plugin. All right, and once you guys activate it, right here, it's gonna say, please activate your copy of Astra Pro. Just go ahead and click on activate, and here it's gonna ask you to paste your license key. All you have to do is go back over here to the Brainstorm, Brainstorm Force website and go to licenses. So I'll click on licenses. And then all you have to do is right here, which says Astra Pro, you're just going to head and copy this and then you'll go back to your website and you'll paste it in. So now we have activated the Astra Pro on this website. So this website now has all the features for the Astra Pro uh, version. Now let's go ahead and install these starter templates as well. So plugins, add new, upload plugin, choose the file. We will also upload the other plugin to get the starter templates. So install this one here, activate the plugin, okay. Now it says there's two installed, which is normal. So we wanna go ahead and uh, deactivate the old one. So the old one right here, we don't need it no more because we're already getting the premium one. And then right here, we need to activate the new copy of our uh, starter template license. And there we go, our license is fully active. So at this point, this website now has access to all of the starter templates and also the Astro Pro features. So over here under the starter templates, um, well, first off, you guys will see, let me step Let me step back here really quick. You'll see that now we have Astra Pro. So this successfully means you've installed the Astra Pro. And then over on the starter template section, you're gonna see that now we can uh, click on this, like a premium here, and go to skip and continue. And you'll see that now we have the option to load this, right? So now we can go ahead and import this as well, right? So that's how you guys can successfully uh, upload the plugins in order to activate the Astra Pro and also the starter templates. So with that said, now let's go ahead and take a look at the features between the free and the pro. Okay, now before we go on to all of the pro modules, I just wanna let you guys know that in these settings right here, you now have the option for, well, we already have the option for performance, but we can have version uh, control, which allows you to roll back different versions of Astra, just in case maybe if you guys updated it and then something broke, which is very common, um, you can roll it back, okay? Here we have beta, so if they are releasing something new, you can register for beta, right? Pretty cool. So next we have the white labeling, and this essentially allows you to hide like the Astra logos, you can change Astra to your company name, and you can change all of the branding for the Astra theme. The reason why, I'll be honest, is because let's say you charge your client three grand, and then they found out that you just imported a starter template and charged them $3,000, they're gonna feel kind of cheated, right? But you know, they're paying you for what they don't know how to do, right? So there is a trade off there. So this sort of just hides all the Astra stuff so people uh, can't research it. You guys are gonna come to find out, you know, clients are very nosy and they like to break stuff. So uh, that's just one thing to look out for. So you do get a few more options with the Astra Pro themes up here in these settings. And you guys can go ahead and check those out on your free time. Okay, so now we're gonna walk you guys through the free and the pro. One thing I also should have mentioned as well is when you guys do activate the pro, you'll need to scroll down here under the Astra dashboard and you'll need to turn on all of the actual pro modules. I'm not really sure Astra decided to, or why they decided to do this. Um, they could have probably just activated all of them by default, but I think maybe in order to reduce the uh, load time on your website, they decided to have it so you can have some activated and some deactivated, right? And we're gonna go through each one, one by one. So the first one is the colors and backgrounds. So on the left side, you're gonna see the Astra free version, right? 
On the right side, this is the Astra Pro version. Now in the free version, you guys can see we can have access to adjust colors. However, in the pro version, you now have the option to change the colors of the headings throughout your websites. So you can change the color for the H1 through H6 tag. This is really only necessary for archive pages and uh, pages where the page builder is really not working. So for example, archive pages, uh, tag pages, product category pages and stuff like that. So it can be helpful on blog archive pages and also some tag pages as well. But again, the page builder does most of the work here. So it's not a significant improvement, but it can be helpful. The next one is the topography option. So if you go over here to Astra under the pro modules, you'll see you can turn on and off the topography pro module. Now this one gives you various uh, control over other parts of the websites like the archive pages, the product pages, and also the menu as well. For example, on your primary menu, you'll see that uh, on the free version, uh, there is no way for us to customize the sub menu fonts and also the mega menu fonts, right? Now on the pro version, you'll see that we have the option over here to now uh, design the submenu fonts and also the mega menu heading font as well. So you do get a little bit more options as far as the menu goes. Now over here under the documentation, I'm just gonna show you guys this just because I don't wanna open up everything. Um, it also gives you the option to design the blog archive page, right, which we designed earlier. And then also the post title, the post meta, and then some other options like pagination and stuff like that. And the next option is the spacing option. This one is, yeah, it can be helpful in some parts of your website, but it just lets you add a little bit of spacing on certain parts of your website. So over here under the Astra Pro, you'll see that this is the spacing option. Now here's the documentation, but um, I'll just show you guys where it's actually helpful. But if we scroll down right here, you'll see that you can adjust the spacing by the site identity, containers, headers, blogs, sidebars, and footers. Uh, for example, here is the actual blog, right? And with the free version, you'll see with the blog archive, um, you can't really adjust the sizing here, right? But on the pro version with the blog archive, you now can. So if you wanna add a little bit of spacing here, you can add some spacing like that, right? And then also for the pagination, which is a little thing here at the bottom if you have tons of posts. Uh, for example, over here, I'll go ahead and give you guys a little example right here. So you'll see that uh, if you do have the numbered here at the bottom, you can add spacing to kind of move it around, but they set it at a pretty good spot by default. So that is one option you guys can do. Also, you can change the spacing by your shop page. So you'll see you can add a little bit more spacing here by your shop page, right? and also for the widgets as well, which is pretty cool. In the free version, you can't do that. So it just gives you like a basic uh, shop layout and you can't really move around the widgets, but you can put invisible widgets in between that and that'll give you space. But hey, that's a little quick hack, but I don't wanna ruin it for the guys at Astro. You know, They're like, hey, don't tell them that. But I have to be very transparent. You can just add something in between like a divider and that will give you space in between the widgets. But um, yeah, that's also one area where you can add it. Another one is the footer. Um, you can make your footer a little bit larger, but I don't think this is necessary either because you can actually add padding for these elements here to push out the menu instead. So I think this is a depreciated uh, feature in my opinion. And the last one they have is the uh, site identity space but um, you guys can always add spacing um, on the logo. So yeah, the spacing option, it can be helpful, but I think it's really only necessary if you guys are running a blog or an e-commerce website. Now the next feature is the blogging feature. This is actually quite helpful because this actually gives you different layouts. It shows you the social sharing, it shows read time, a whole lot of really cool stuff. So this is it right here, the blogging pro. And let's just go ahead and go through this. Now, this is the blog archive, right? So this is where your actual posts will display. Right away, you guys probably noticed that we have this really cool button right here. But let's scroll down, right? Just keep scrolling. Wait, hold on. Yeah, just keep scrolling. All right. And we're gonna scroll. Now, right away, we can change the layouts. So we have layouts, the main layouts, layout two, and then we have layout three. I think we gotta make this a little bit bigger here. Yeah, so layout, there we go, layout two, layout three. So it gives you a little bit more layouts, right? We can also add space between posts. We can enable the date box, right? 
And you'll see in the free version, you know, you don't have that many options. So all these options are only available for the pro as well. If we scroll down, there is another option that we get for the meta and that is the read time. So on the left side, you'll see that we don't get read time, right? But now we have read time. So some people, you know, I think everyone today, their, their brain capacity is getting smaller because they're using TikTok and stuff. So they need to know like, okay, I just have a minute. Like, can I read this? So, you know, they don't wanna invest all their time, I guess. That's the nice way to say it. I, I would just say people's attention spans are getting smaller. You know, that's, that's the more cynical way of saying it, right? Um, and then you have more options, right? You have uh, the post content option where you can show um, the number of excerpts. So over here, it just does like, you know, it just gives you a little brief. Um, it doesn't give you any option for the post content on the free version, but over here, you can put exactly how many words you want. And then you can adjust the image size, pagination number, and then the post pagination style as well, right? So you do get a lot of pretty cool options with the pro version of Astro when it comes to blogs. So I would say the blogging uh, features are pretty useful. Uh, let's go ahead and scroll up right here. And you do get some more options in the single post. So let's go over here to single post now, right? Single post, I'll click on this one and I'll click on this one here, okay. All right, so on the free version, you'll see I showed you guys this earlier. You do have all these options here on the left side, but on the other one, on the pro version, you'll see that we now have author info. Remember earlier in the video, guys, we talked about how you wanna put the author bio. Well, this is where the pro version lets you display the author bio. You can also use auto load previous posts. You can remove the featured image padding. I mean, is that really necessary? I mean, it's not, not too much padding, but yeah. Um, enable social sharing, which is cool. So you guys can now have the little cute little social sharing icons and then you can decorate them and design them and customize them. And you can also add more, right? And you can also enable a heading for your social icons if you wanna add a little heading right here. And you can also say, you know what? I want this actually below the post. So you can move your social icons below the post right there. So it'll show like at the end, right? If you wanna go that route. And then also you can enable related posts and then you can further customize the related posts as well. So let's see here, we can put this in the middle, right? Add a three column layout, and then you can show or hide specific elements. Pretty cool, right? So I would say like the blogging features with Astra, they are pretty rich. You know, it does give you a lot more customization. It makes your blog look a little bit more modernized, right? So if you guys are running a blog, the Astra Pro version would actually be pretty useful. The next option is very self-explanatory. This is the sticky header option. If you guys are noobs and you don't know what a sticky header is, it allows your menu to basically follow you as the user scrolls. So this is it right here. It is the sticky header, right? And you'll see over here, whoops, nope, wrong one. All right, on the left side, you'll see that we have no options for sticky headers at all. So I can't even give you comparison, right? Because there's no option for me to click on sticky header. Now, if you do have a sticky header, you can enable the sticky header, right? And we can go ahead and add in more options here, right? You can stick above the header, stick primary header, uh, stick below header, enable shrink effect, right? Uh, hide when the user is scrolling down, right? So notice here how, as I scrolled up, up and down, the menu follows me right here. So that's exactly what it's doing. But we need to actually change this actual, um, you know, this color right here when the user's scrolling down. And you can do that as well. You can further customize the color. If we do add the sticky header, you guys can see, we can't see the text. Well, you actually have the option to change the text and everything while the user scrolls, which is pretty cool. And over here, we'll go ahead and turn this bad boy on. Text put black, right, and the link black. And then you can even change the background color. So as the user scrolls, you can even change the background color. So for example, we'll throw in the beautiful, uh, we got gradient, no, we don't got gradient no more. Oh, they took it off, all right, whatever. <laughs> All right, but uh, you guys get the point, you know, so we can change the entire um, the entire menu, we can change the sub menu color and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and scroll up, right? And if I scroll down, You'll see, oh, look at that. The menu follows us. How cool is that? But with this website, it doesn't work. You know, it doesn't work at all. So um, yeah, that's that's one uh, big pro. You do get these sticky header options with the Astra uh, Pro, and you can also change the colors of them as well when the user scrolls down. So the next options are the container layout options. And I'll be honest with you guys, I don't think they're useful at all, right? I think these are more depreciated options, but I'm gonna show you guys, right? 
So the guys at Astro, don't hate me, guys. I'm just, I'm just voicing my opinion, okay? Here we have the site layouts, okay? Now, if you guys are not using a page builder like Elementor, Brizzy, uh, Beaver Builder, you're not using any page builder and you wanna use like the stock block editor, it, it can be useful, right? So for example, you first would pick a container layout like normal, narrow, full width, right? The free version, same thing. So you can change the layouts, but within that container, you can adjust the content within that container if you wanna go that route, all right? So let's say for instance, um, over here, I'll just make this full width. We have this as narrow, right? Let's just do normal, right? You'll see that uh, within full width, it will change the, I'm sorry, within normal, it'll change it to something like full width or something like that. So uh, for example, this one's easier to show, right? Full width, right? We have max width, okay? We have padded. Um, fluid, fluid, huh? I like, I like the, the names are given. Uh, yeah, fluid. And then obviously you can pick it, pick a container and then change the site layout within that container. Um, yeah, that's something if you guys wanna go, um, that's something that you can do with the Astro Pro. Um, usually today guys with page builders, you know, you can adjust the layouts, you know, with the page builder, they override these settings. So uh, I don't think that this would be something worth upgrading. And um, if you guys are using Gutenberg maybe perhaps, but if you're using Elementor, these options probably would not apply to any of you guys. Now, the next feature is the Astra Mega Menu. With this feature, you guys can actually add icons next to your menu, and then you guys can also create a large Mega Menu for each specific page on your website. This is probably one of the coolest features that the Astra Pro theme has to offer. So going over here, you'll see that this is the nav menu settings. Now I'll show you guys how to set it up, but in my opinion, I do think that they need to make it a bit more intuitive, but I'll show you guys how to set all of this up. So over here, you'll see appearance, and then I'll click on menus. And I've already created one, obviously, as you guys can see, right? But what I'm gonna do here is just start from scratch and just explain exactly how I did this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and remove this, remove this, and remove this. Okay, so now I have no mega menu on whatsoever. So if you go to take a look at the websites, you'll see that there is nothing there except for that cool icon that I added earlier. Let's go down over here to appearance and menus. And it works like this. You would click on the actual page, right? And then you have this new option here called Astro menu settings. If you click on this, you can go ahead and add icons to every single page. So you'll see right here, how I added an icon right here. You can adjust the size, the icon spacing, and then you can go a step further here. And then you guys can also uh, change like the color of the icon and everything else. And there's a lot of customization options as you guys can tell, right? So I'm not gonna go through every single one of these, obviously, you guys can tinker around with these on your own free time. But what I will show you guys is how to add in the Mega Menu. So the Mega Menu is very interesting. So what I'm gonna do here is add in a custom link, right? And I'm just gonna put a URL, and this will be like page one, okay? And here we go, we have page one, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it below the actual home. So make sure it looks just like that. And then I'll do this a few more times, right? So page two, okay. And then page three, all right. And then we'll throw in page four. Now, uh, again, these don't have to be custom links, but I'm just giving you an example. So you can use your pages as well. Um, I just want to make sure my menu doesn't get all messed up and stuff like that. So the first thing is you need to add in a custom link that is actually a requirement for the first one. And you need to explain what's gonna be on this, right? So if I click on this, you'll see, um, do you want this as a heading, right? Now, this is if you want to have a heading for your mega menu. So I'm gonna turn this on really quick, okay? If you guys don't know what this is yet, don't worry. You guys will, this will all make sense in just a little bit, okay? And for this right here, I'm gonna put our mega menu. Okay, I'll close that. And I'm gonna take the page two, page three, page four, right? And I'll throw in one more here. This will be page five. Essentially what these are guys is, these are actually pages or links to whatever, right? So I don't have to use just custom links. You know, obviously I can use pages if I wanna add this to the mega menu and stuff like that, okay? So now that I've done that, I now want to go ahead and add in a background. So. Uh, first off, I'll click on save menu and let's just give you guys a quick little overview so far, but what we've done. So there's the home, right? 
And if I hover over it, you'll now see we have our mega menu, right? Page one, page two, page three, page four, and then also the about us. Okay, you guys with me so far? All right, cool. Now let's go back over here to dashboard, appearance and menus. Then for the R mega menu, I'll make sure that this is a heading, right? Click on save changes. Okay. And then I'll click on save menu. So essentially what I have here, guys, is I have a heading text and then I have one, two, three, four, five pages below that. Okay. So let me just go ahead and show you guys what we've done so far, just so we're not lost, right? So you'll see that we have our mega menu and you can see that it's actually bolded. And then we have page one, or I'm sorry, page two, page three, page four, page five, and about us, right? And we can reduce the number of columns. We can add in icons. We can adjust the background, all that stuff. So let's go back over here to menus. And for the mega menu, I'll click on Astro menu settings. And over here, you'll see that we have the design option. And this is where I can change the actual background color. We can add in a gradient like I did before. So for example, I can put in like a green here. And then also you can add in an image and then there's options for the images and then for the colors like the heading, the text link and so on and so forth. So there are a lot of other styling options that you guys can go through. Now, if you guys do wanna change the size of the mega menu, there's also a lot of options right here. So you guys can choose a custom width, right? Or you can do full with stretched, full width or menu container width. It really depends on you guys. So what you can do here is just simply just go through each one and then refresh the page and then check it out see if that works for you. Like this is the size, the first size. And then over here we can do menu container with something like that. So you can see that uh, you can go ahead and, you know, pick a specific size for your mega menu if you choose to do that. All right, now let's say if you guys wanna add more columns to your mega menu, I'll walk you guys through on how to do that. So we have this first one right here, which is a mega menu, right? But I'm gonna take this and drag those underneath the mega menu. Now I wanna add in another, like a, a, a heading right here, right? So under the custom links, I'll put in another, let's see, mega menu two, right? I'll take this and I'm gonna put this right back over here and I'm gonna drag these under it just like that. And I can add in a third one, mega menu three. Okay. And then I'll take this and then you'll see now we have three rows. So we have one row, two rows and three rows. So here I'll save the uh, menu, go back to our websites, refresh the page and voila. Now we have one row, two rows and three rows. And of course, if you know, if you guys want to make it larger, because earlier it was a lot larger, you guys can just go over here to the Astro settings and then make it like full width or whatever, you know, change it to, you know, whatever color you want, like the gradient, like we had before, right? Save it. And then over here, I'll refresh the page. And there you go. So now we have three rows, gradients, and then also we have it full width. So overall, I do think the mega menu option is really cool. And this is one of the probably coolest features in the Astro Pro features. Now, the next option is the page headers. Now, this is also sort of a depreciated option. And I'm gonna explain where this can work and where it can be useful. So here is the option right here. And I'll go ahead and click on settings. Now, a strange thing here is I don't even know how to access this page actually navigating the sidebar. I only know how to get there by going to the Azure Pro. Now here you guys can see I made a blog archive page. Essentially what this does is you guys can actually create specific uh, sections throughout your websites um, using their little proprietary builder. Now this is sort of like a theme builder for Elementor. So if you guys have used Elementor and you're used to the theme builder, this is kind of like a theme builder, but it's kind of not. So let me walk you guys through on how to do this. So for example, up here, I'll click on add new and here you have some options. And essentially what this does is this actually allows you to add sections throughout your websites. So here are the styling options, right? Here you can adjust the uh, style, but first let's give this a name. So this will be like the blog archive two. Okay. And here we have the text color. I'll change this to something like red. Okay. And then for the background size, you guys can choose like a different background size and then you can add padding to that. Now, keep in mind, we're actually building the page. So it's kind of hard because you, there is no visual process on how to do this, right? So I'll put it in a white background here, right? You guys can also put it in an image, 
but I'm gonna uncheck that. If you have this checked by default, it's going to use the featured image of the post as the actual background. And you guys can also add in a cool parallax effect, right? So if you wanna add in parallax, sure, why not? And the site header gives you the option to merge the page header with the site header, essentially making no padding, right? So making it really uptight. And then we have the display rules. And this is probably the most important parts of this whole uh, feature. So where it says display on, you guys can actually choose where you want this to display on. So you can put it on the entire website, on specific pages, which is very useful. And then also you have posts, post categories, you know, the tags, and then so on and so forth. So you can put this on any specific part of your website. Sort of like a theme builder, right? So let's go ahead and say, you know what? I wanna select the author archive, okay? So next we have user roles and you can select who you want to see this, right? So you can get really technical and nitty gritty here. But what I'm gonna do here is just click on publish. So really quick, I have two different page headers. I have one that I made earlier under the blog archive and you'll see the text is black and we have a gray background and this applies on the category pages. And then we also have the one that we just created and this is for the archive pages and this is red text with a white background, okay? All right, so let me walk you guys through this. So over here under blog, and if I scroll down and I click on uncategorize, which is an archive page, you're gonna see that we have this gray background with this black text. That's because this one right here is actually showing on all post archives, right? And that's the one I created. Now there is another one for the author archive. That means this will only display on author pages. So let's go find the author here. So I'll go ahead and scroll down. I'll click on a post. And then here's the author. So if I click on this, you will then see that we have the background with the red text. Now, the reason why this is using an image is because over here under the options, I forgot to uncheck this. There we go. So if I uncheck that, now it's just gonna show a white color. So I'll refresh the page and there you go. So essentially it's sort of like a theme builder. It can be very useful on your archive pages that you can't really edit with Elementor. So that is what the page header is summed up. It can be helpful on your archive pages and also on some of your shop pages and your archive product pages. Now, the next feature is probably one very good reason to purchase Astro Pro and that is the custom layouts. This essentially is a theme builder. So it allows you to build custom headers, footers, for four pages and all these different pages on your websites. So if we scroll down, you're gonna see custom layouts. Right here, I'll click on settings. All right, so this is the theme builder with Astra. Now, if you guys are familiar with Elementor, you guys are probably familiar with the theme builder, right? This is pretty much the same thing. You guys can build custom headers, custom footers. Uh, you can also use hooks, which essentially adds in elements in between elements on your website. You can create a custom 404 page, page content, and then also create a custom templates. Now, uh, let me just give you guys an example here. So let's say, for example, you want to build out a custom footer on your website using Elementor or Gutenberg or whatever page that you guys are using. Here under the footer, I'll go ahead and click on add new. And here I'll select footer. And this is my main footer, okay? I'll click on publish and publish. And then I'll click on edit with Elementor. All right, now I've already went ahead and created and my own footer, right? So I'm not gonna make one from scratch because that's gonna take a lot of time. So uh, here I'll go to my templates, my templates, and then here's my footer. I'll insert my footer, right? And this is my new footer. All right, so what I'll do now is click on update. All right, so once we have created this footer, now I'm gonna click on edit and I wanna set the display conditions. So up here under the Astro logo, uh, we have our footer layouts, right? And then we have display and user conditions. And then you can also choose to like not display it on some parts of your website, right? But um, once that's done, I'll click on return to post and then I'll click on update. So now let's take a look at our websites. Let's go ahead and go over here to visit sites and we'll scroll down and voila, we now have our new footer and this is going to override the theme settings so this is now going to display on all of your pages. So if I go over here to the blog and I scroll down, you'll see that we do have the new custom footer. You can do the same thing with the header as well. However, if you guys do decide to use the Astra uh, theme builder and you guys are using a page builder, you might need to find a page builder that has the nav menu items. So only Elementor Pro has the nav menu items. So if you're using the free version, 
uh, you still couldn't build a custom header because you don't have the elements needed to build a custom header because only Astro Pro gives you those elements, right? Makes sense? All right, let's go ahead and go back. Now let's make a uh, custom 404 page, right? And I'll click on add new. This will be our 404 page and this is 404. And then I'll click on edit with Elementor. Here, I'll quickly go ahead and grab something, right? What I'll do is, you know, just for tutorial purposes, guys, this is a quick little shortcut, right? I'll import this and then we're just gonna change the text. So here's a good little shortcut. Here, I'll put lost, go back. And then this will be like, go back home, right? So go back, here we go, go back. And then for the link, this will be the home page, right? So home, and I'll delete this. And I'll change this background here to just something, you know, something very easy, right? Just like a straight color. You guys get the point, right? I'm just, you know, I don't want to get too much into the whole <laughs> designing thing. And then we'll just get rid of these other little sections, right? So there you go. We have a custom 404 page. I'll click on publish. And then let's go back to the dashboard. All right. Now over here under the Astro logo, we have our 404 page displaying, so we can disable the footer and also the primary menu header. This is good because you don't want to give users the option to click on something. You want them to go right back to your website. So essentially what I'm doing here is saying there's only one button you can click, which is the go back button, right? And then also we have display conditions where you can display it for specific users and stuff like that. And also uh, date and time conditions. I mean, so much, so much customization options here. I mean, I don't know what you'd use them for, but hey, they're available, right? Pretty cool. So I'll go ahead now and click on update. All right, so now if we go to the 404 page where someone types in a wrong URL, it'll take them to this page here, right? And their only option would be just to go back where they would just go right back to the home page, right? So it is pretty helpful when you guys, you know, wanna create custom 404 pages and stuff like that. Now I'm just barely scratching the surface here. You guys can create custom post pages, custom archive pages, custom headers, if you guys have something to actually build the menu with, and then also page content. Now, I'm not gonna go through all these options because there is a lot, and I think Astra actually already made like a one hour video just on what you can do with all these options. So I'll go ahead and leave that in the description of this video. But I would say this is probably one of the coolest features that come with the Astra theme, and this alone might be worth upgrading to the Pro. Now the next one is the WooCommerce features. Now, if you guys are running a store with WordPress and using Astra, the Pro features are actually pretty cool. So over here, you'll see that if we scroll down, it'll be the option for WooCommerce. Now, in order for these options to display, you have to have the WooCommerce plugin installed, right? So if it's not installed, there's nothing to show, right? So make sure that you guys do have the uh, WooCommerce plugin installed. And if you guys don't know what that is, that basically turns your website into a website where you can sell products. I have a whole tutorial on the WooCommerce plugin, and I'll leave that in the description below of this video. All right, but anyways, for the rest of us, okay. So let's go ahead and go through this. Now, there are a lot of options. They display on the shop page, single posts, and everywhere. So I need the documentation's help here to walk you guys through exactly uh, where all of the features display. The first thing is the product catalog, right? So the product catalog is essentially your default shop page, okay? So it's just like your store, right? So over here, you'll see we have the free version on the left side, and on the right side is the pro version, okay? Now, if I scroll down right here, you're gonna see that we have two different designs, design one and design two, right? With the pro version, whoops, we actually have three. <clears throat> so we have design one, right? Design two, and then design three. So you do get another design with the, um, you know, with Astra Pro. All right, so now all these right here are extra features and none of these are in the uh, free version. So you can display the page title, you can display breadcrumbs, enable sticky sidebar, enable a filter accordion, pretty cool. You can also turn on quick view. Ooh, look at that, quick view on image, on image click. Uh, if you guys are, you know, you don't know what that is, if you click on something, it'll actually just like pop it up and just bloop, you know, like a quick view kind of thing, you know, without them having to actually load a whole page, you know. We also have the option to add a sticky at the cart button on the pop-up as well. We can add the pagination, which is this here at the bottom, right? If you guys don't like this, you can turn on infinite scroll and that will just keep displaying as many products as you have and it'll completely get rid of the pagination, right? 
and then events to trigger infinite loading. So there are uh, events where you can turn on infinite loading, like clicking on that, and then it should, this will actually load it more, right? So uh, yeah, those are awesome features that are available in the uh, shop page, right? So pretty cool, you guys do get an extra layout. So next we have the single product options. Now with the single product options with WooCommerce, you'll see that you know you can generally add a container layout and then also add sidebars, right? Pretty simple, pretty bland, pretty, pretty boring, right? I mean, that's like basically every theme out there. But with the pro version of Astra, they actually give you a new option right here called the single product gallery. So if you scroll down, you'll see that there's no option for the um, single product gallery. And this essentially allows you to style your product in various ways. So I'm gonna zoom this up really quick. And here's one, right? There's one, here's, uh, here's two, okay. First image large, okay. All right, and then I guess it scrolls down, okay. It's cool, and we got this one here, vertical slider, huh? Okay, so yeah, all right. The, Vertical slider, all right, we just click on that and okay. And then we got the horizontal slider. Let's take a look there. Let's see. All right, yeah, so yeah, it's a, we got some more gallery layouts, you know, pretty pretty cool, you know. Um, let's go ahead and just uh, keep scrolling down here. Now there are more options here. So um, here we have the single product structure, but um, with this one right here, you do get more options. You do get like extras, and then you also get um, payments. No, you just get extras. So you just get one more, okay? And then for the single product options, you do get the option to now make the product sticky on summary. So what that means, uh, if you turn this on and you actually, um, well, actually I don't have enough content here. Oh, there it goes, okay. So you'll see here on the right side how it's sticky. This is really good if you have products with a lot of images and you wanna display them because when the users are scrolling down, it'll still show the uh, sticky content on the right side, which is pretty helpful. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and keep scrolling down here. We also have uh, some layouts. So it looks like after here, you know, you can enable sticky at a cart, which is pretty cool. And that's pretty much it, right? But over here, you have a lot more options. You can choose different layouts, right? So the product description, ooh, let's take a look at the product description here. So that should be this right here at the bottom. So there are various ways on how to design that. I wonder how they did that, that's interesting. So that's pretty cool. So we can change the layout, right? Four different ways, okay. Display upsells, display related products. You can choose the amount of columns, number of products, and then also enable sticky add to cart on this page as well. So you do get a lot more options here on the single product page as well. So that's always pretty helpful. Also, they have added some more options in the cart. So let's go over here to the cart really quick. Okay, so next is the cart options. Right here, you guys can change the uh, change the cart button text to checkout and then enable cross sells in the free version, right? Pretty, pretty ordinary. Here, you can enable a modern cart layout. Let's see what that looks like actually. Let's make this bigger really quick. So this is the default one, right? Now let's take a look at the modern cart layouts. Let's take a look here, guys. See what we got going on here. All right, is, 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 that, is that modernized? Okay, it's cool, you know, we got, we got the modern layouts, right? Change the cart button text, so you can change it to whatever you want. And they give you a real-time quantity updater, which you can just update it, and then it updates in real time. Whoops, I think that's probably because we have the theme customizer turned on. Let's see if we turn that on and off here. There it goes, okay. Yeah, so that was just weird because when you're working in the theme customizer, it's not perfect, right? So that is the options with the cart page, okay? So you do get a little bit more options in the carts. And now let's take a look at the checkout page. Here we go, proceed to checkout. And over here, proceed to checkout. Will this work? Will this work? Okay, cool. All right, so let's make this a little bit smaller here. All right, okay, there we go. So it looks like here, um, we can actually design the checkout page. You have a lot more options to change the content background color. For the general, we can change the width to a custom width, right? So over here, it looks like you don't have any options. All you can really do is just make the billing details optional or required. That's really all you can do in the free version. So over here, you do have a lot more options where you can display product images, display sticky, a two-step checkout. Ooh, that's pretty cool, because usually you need a plugin for that. That essentially means that you bypass the cart page. So when someone adds something to the cart, it goes directly to checkout, right? So uh, here we go, you know, two-step checkouts. We can turn that on here. We can turn on distraction-free checkouts. 
A back to button cart. Huh. Back to cart button. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, so this is more like a squeeze page. You know, this would be like the two-step checking. So uh, yeah, it completely changes everything on your form, which is pretty cool. But I'll go ahead and turn that off. Okay. And then they have the modern and default. So this is the default, right? And then modern. Okay. Oh no, sorry. Uh, so so this is the modern layout. Okay, I got it now. Okay, got it. And they have a, a one column. Let's take a look at that. One column and two columns. So the modern checkout layout is pretty cool, right? And then you can adjust the text and all that stuff. And then you can fiddle with all these options right here. Um, also here, you can go ahead and make them optional or required just like we did earlier. So yeah, even the checkout, you guys can make it a little bit more modernized and you can change stuff to your liking. So again, you do get a little bit more customization on the checkout page too. And the last options would be the miscellaneous options. So in the free version, you can enable qu quantity plus and minus. Okay, quantity plus and minus. Uh, I'm assuming that will actually display somewhere on the actual, uh, I guess on the product page or something. Let's take a look here. So if I click on a product, maybe I can add in more or less. There we go, more or less, okay. Now for the pro version, you guys have a lot more, right? So first off, we can design a lot of the actual rating colors, the sales badge. And then for the quantity colors, we can also adjust the colors. And over here, we can change the, I guess the sales bubble to a square, and then we can fully design that, enable custom border radius. I mean, that's that's really, really picky. You know, if you wanna like make the circle or the square a specific style, you can do that, right? Um, here we have enable quantity plus, quantity plus minus button. You can make it merge. Let's just take a look here. So let's click on one of these products here and, and see uh, how that differs from the free version here. All right, so let's go ahead and see what, what it is. All right, so it says it's merged, right? Vertical, let's see here. Okay, now it's vertical, all right? So it's, yeah, it's interesting, right? We got some, we got some changes, you know? It's, it's not like just, uh, you know, they did some work here, <laughs> you know, is what I'm trying to say, right? Uh, enable step navigation, enable step number. I think this actually puts at the top of your, yeah. So what that does is if you go to like checkout, it creates those steps. So I'll first go to view the cart and I do like this feature. So now they have the steps and those guys copied me. This looks like my work. You know, I actually did this on one of my tutorials and I think they might've got some inspiration from me, but hey, that's cool. Uh, here, proceed to checkout and then it'll go to number two, right? So yeah, and then obviously when you check out, it'll go to number three. So that is pretty much it for the WooCommerce options. There are a lot more things that you can do and they're pretty much scattered throughout the entire theme. I do wish that Astra actually made it a little bit more organized because it's hard for me to actually know what I'm getting in the pro because as you can tell, the options are everywhere and there's like one option under there, one option over there, and it's it's kind of hard to see what I'm getting in the pro version, right? But if you guys are running a WooCommerce store or an e-commerce website, upgrading to the Astra Pro makes a lot of sense. All right, party people, I hope you guys enjoyed this Astra tutorial. If you guys have any questions for me about the Astra theme or WordPress, let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know how I did. Was this tutorial good? Did I finally help people uh, understand what they get in the pro version? Because I can totally understand, you know, when um, people ask me like, should I get the pro version of Astra? I'm kind of like, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it depends on what you're building. So I think this uh, will basically help people clarify what they're getting in the pro version. So again, if you guys have any questions for me or comments, let me know in the comments below. And until then, I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.